the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. And your grace upon this teaching. May it not be trivialized, O oh God. I pray that you activate destinies in a strange way tonight. In the name of Jesus, answer the questions that are in the hearts of your people. Release the anointings that they desire for the next level of their lives. Lord, we thank you for people here who are sick, oppressed, who are here just trusting you for a touch. Some do not even know what the name of their issues are. But I pray that they will receive a touch from God tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Ecclesiastes 10 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 15. Jesus, we bless you. It's always a pleasure to bring God's word. And every time the word of God comes, it comes not just to challenge us but to change us. If you are not changed by the word, Listen, if the word of God cannot change you, then nothing else can change you. Are we together? Because the word of God created the heavens and the earth. Praise the Lord. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 15. Read it slowly. Read it intelligently. Read it with understanding. One to read. Ah, No, 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 no. Slowly doesn't mean quietly. One to read. He never said the labor of the foolish whereas some of them would have found out why some escaped but he says the labor of the foolish the problem is not the labor the problem is those who are laboring there is a condition the bible says the labor of the foolish does what weary every one of them why because he knoweth not that's what makes him foolish because he does not know how to go to the city there is a way to go to the city there is a formula to go to the city listen please there is a system that can take a man from where he is to his place in destiny and the bible says the foolish and the wise do the same thing seemingly they are all laboring but then the bible says it wearied every one of them and this is why it worries them it says they do not know how it did say they do not know the name of the city they know what they want they know where they want to go to but the system the system to take them from where they are to where they need to be you know i've said it again and again that believers are not confused as to the outcome of their lives what they want we all know what we want or at least we have an idea the challenge usually is the understanding of what it will take to leave us from where we are to where we need to be and i pray that god will open our eyes in the name of jesus write this word down destiny write this word down destiny destiny the word destiny is a very interesting word there's almost no man of god who has not spoken about this word we love it so much we dream about it we discuss it but the bible says listen please that there is a path listen there is a path that seemeth right but then it says the end thereof are the ways of death are we together now the word destiny simply means your predefined
place of fulfillment write it down please i'll give you a few definitions quickly your predefined place of fulfillment predefined means that you do not guess in the loins of prophecy and in the loins of time there is a place allocated for you please listen there is a place in destiny there is a place in prophecy allocated for each and every one of us and your fulfillment and your relevance in life is tied to not only your discovery but your arrival you there is a condition there is a place where you must arrive to be able to find the joy and the fulfillment of living it's called destiny the second definition of destiny is the place where your assignment finds full expression your destiny represents the place where your assignment your purpose on earth your reason for living your destiny represents the place where you can say experientially that i am living the reason for which i am born i am making impact number three i went ahead of myself the third definition of destiny is the place of notable and consistent impact the place of notable and consistent impact no longer the place of desire no longer the place of ambition that you have gotten to a place where your impact is notable your impact is significant the last definition of the word destiny destiny also represents a place where you have earned the right to transform lives and to watch those lives transform others not just that you are transforming lives you are fulfilling destiny to the extent to which you have earned the right to transform lives and you have the privilege in your lifetime of watching those lives you have transformed transform others hallelujah dr miles munro of blessed memory a man who has changed my life so much i honor him in life and in death he said this he said the greatest tragedy in life is not death the greatest tragedy in life is a life without a purpose a life without a meaning a life without a reason for living that you get up in the morning and there is no constructive definition as to what justifies your living there are so many people angry and frustrated in life listen please we attempt to cover the need for activating and fulfilling destiny with many things we try education and then you know after many years of laborious study we don't seem to make sense out of our sacrifice we try marriage and for many people is hell they are living in hell literally we try money we try several things in an attempt to get to that place but it doesn't seem to bring that fulfillment and satisfaction and many people in nigeria in their old age are full of regrets are full of pain anointed people inclusive so tonight i want to challenge us there's nothing that gives me joy as seeing an individual or a people listen please living a life of purpose and a life of meaning your need for the anointing is useless without an understanding of destiny your need for financial prosperity your need for a wife or a husband your need for children your need for influence is absolutely useless if you do not understand god's idea of destiny say there is a place for me in life i want you to shout it with conviction there is a place for me in life. 
listen there is no man born of a woman i know you've heard it but listen to it with an anointing on it there is no man born of a woman regardless of the conditions that surrounded your birth dr miles Munro said there may be illegitimate parents but there are not there may be illegitimate relationships but there are no illegitimate children the concept of an illegitimate child is just a social cultural term it does not exist there's no such thing as an illegitimate child are we together everybody that appears on this earth appears for a reason intentionally allowed to come nobody listen nobody has the power in himself to just fabricate a child and bring him in this realm are we together now so every one of us seated here and those following and listening we have a place in life and destiny but so many people never get to discover it so many people never get to live in the reality in fact it's, it's cheaper to not even discover it than to discover it and never actualize it in your lifetime you can justify your pain by saying i never had a, an opportunity to know but then it's painful when you know that this is the prophetic blueprint of my life and then you never get to live it are we together there is no one sent here on earth by mistake you just arrive and then you say lord why am i here and god will say ah sorry oh, let's check why is he here exactly no 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 no. we can choose to refuse to become the prophecy upon our lives we can reject god's program for our lives and create another program by ourselves but anyone who will find fulfillment especially in this end time there are men and women who must align to the purposes of the kingdom listen you are not here to create a program for yourself you are here to walk in a program that has been predestined are we together jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 5 he was speaking to a little boy called jeremiah revealing to him his prophetic destiny this was a little boy who was destined to be a prophet to speak the purposes of god over nations and here he was having an encounter with the lord and then he was receiving a download of the blueprint what he would live for what he would die for and here's what he says before i formed thee in the belly I knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee and I did what ordained thee a prophet to the nations so on on Jeremiah's day of birth Jeremiah's mother would have held him and looked at him and said wow little child very helpless but in the loins of prophecy that was a prophet when you read further it begins to reveal the extent of his prophetic influence how that he was vested with the responsibility of not only speaking god's counsel to individuals but to kings to nations to nobles it was up to jeremiah to never fulfill that there was a man in the bible called elisha and the bible tells us that elisha was a farmer but in that farmer was a prophet a prophet who would do mighty things he would have died a farmer because he did not know the road to the city but something happened in his life may you find the road map to your destiny in the name of jesus christ let me tell you you see jealousy look up please jealousy resentment huh all of this criticism backbiting are a direct product of the confusion usually when we meet a stumbling block on our road to destiny and we are surrounded by all kinds of vagueness and confusion that idleness in our confusion will make us to turn and when you see another life walking with a level of dexterity and accuracy it usually will create a reaction that reaction is what we call resentment that reaction is what we call criticism are we together now so it's not about saying stop criticizing people you have to be too busy in your idleness you there is nothing else to do 
but when you find something that occupies you the time span a mad for you will look too short the a sense of urgency will drive you like a madman are we together now everyone has a destiny in christ hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 jesus who was a portrait of our life the firstborn among the many brethren in the similitude of our life said this said lo i come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will oh god lo i come this is why i came when jesus showed up no confusion he understood exactly the blueprint of his life when he went to the temple in luke chapter 4 the bible says it was given to him the scroll of Isaiah, the prophecy that isaiah prophesied about him and then he began to read the spirit of the lord is upon me because this and that and that look at a little boy at age 12 he had discovered his assignment already was about at the temple studying and preparing for a great destiny to an extent that he told his parents he said ah, do you not know are you no longer uh, um, well not bible students but do you no longer go to the temple to hear the prophecy mary have you forgotten i thought you said the angel spoke to you why are you questioning my zeal to fulfill the reason for which i was born 33 and a half years and he made an impact with his life that for eternity we will never recover truly truly i believe in long life but sincerely speaking it's not how long you live but how effective there is a way a man's one year can become someone else's lifetime and impact in one year can be so transgenerational jesus died at 33 and a half or a quarter years old but out of that 33 years only three years were used in active ministry are we together lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me tonight i want to share with us on the requirements for manifesting your destiny that's not a topic it's just what i want to do now the requirements the cost dimension many of us are aware i'm not so much about the discovery as it is manifesting it I've, I've done a teaching discovering your purpose you can get it and several other teachings along the um the lines of destiny but tonight the lord put it in my heart to teach us there is a system everybody said there is a system you're not going to walk to to your place of destiny just um by default nothing works in life until you walk it nothing moves in life until you move it right newton's first law of mechanics nothing will move until you move it you sit down the way you are nothing will change you will grow older the only thing that will change is your age you are celebrating 35 36 then you jump to 47 48 but your life is not moving do you know my concept of birthdays i truly believe in celebrating birthdays but birthday is not just the fact that you were born in my opinion birthdays should be celebrated only when purpose is discovered and is being lived you truly do not have a right you have a right to thank god for being born but you have no right to celebrate your birthday what are you celebrating you should celebrate the reason for living if your life is so impactful you will not even be the one celebrating you would have blessed people too much they will be too grateful to leave you when you have to call everybody and remind them hi ah, hey, jimmy abba you mean you you are you are just remembering that it's my birthday it's a message read the writings on the wall your life is not notable enough there are people they prepare for their birthdays one year as soon as they finish one they start what do i do for him for all that he has done in my life some of us harass people we have never invested in their lives two weeks to my birthday said just to let you know that it's my birthday and you send a general bulk message again reminder and then out of those 200 people 
maybe only two or three it's a message it's not for you to be angry it's a sign that your life is not blessing anybody notably let me tell you no matter how dark and depraved people are when you bless their lives they become too grateful to not notice it is god speaking to us i want to share with you some strong requirements you must be determined to not just succeed but fulfill your destiny my concept of success is fulfilling your assignment not just moving forward not just getting married not just finishing school not just getting a job or a promotion or a raise all those things are periphery the, the truth is listen listen let me tell you if you do not find out god's goal for your life and you are not living it you are wasting your time and you are wasting the time of others amen are we together i'd like you to pray a prayer before we go into the details of the requirement and say lord any price for my destiny i receive grace to pray it lift your voice if you are not ready you don't have to pray you won't go to hell but be sure that you are not going to rise any price for my destiny lord i'm tired of living my life carelessly i'm growing older time is going there's nothing that is giving my life meaning as i listen to your word now lord if it will sting me let it sting me but my heart my mind my spirit is open let no price be too great oh god for my destiny let no price be too great for my destiny are you praying lord there is an anointing upon my life the nations must drink from there is no price that is too great make sure you are praying don't be careless tonight you are about to hear something that will change your life some of you change your lineage because of you through you you've been complaining about what has happened now god is giving you a choice to make a decision that probably your parents did not make lord let pain let pain not stand my way to greatness give me grace to conquer pain give me grace to conquer shame hallelujah let's write number one requirement to fulfilling your god-given destiny the first requirement is an encounter with jesus a genuine encounter with jesus not coming out for an altar call that's important but an encounter with jesus john 7 when you read john 7 john 3 i'm sorry verse 7 actually it's 3 to 7 john chapter 3 the encounter that nicodemus had with jesus now understand this the context of that scripture is very interesting because nicodemus was a teacher of the law nicodemus was a doctor he was a philosopher he was intelligent he was a graduate he was even employed nicodemus was not a small man he was a man of influence but every time together with his colleagues they kept insulting jesus castigating jesus but they were secret fears and frustration nicodemus got to a point where his life was not making sense and then he sneaked in by night and came to jesus and then he says rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him and then jesus said verily verily i say unto you right he said except ye be born again you shall not see the kingdom of god now he, he begins to talk how can i be born again will i enter into my mother's womb and then verse 5 he now says um you know verily verily i say unto you except ye be born of the water and of the spirit then you cannot enter the kingdom right then jesus now begins to speak and all of that and says the wind blow it where it listed verse 7 that's where i'm really going to verse 7 this is what he said marvel not that i say unto you ye must 
be born again it didn't say ye may it didn't say ye should being born again is not an advice being born again is a requirement writing jam is not an advice writing jam is a requirement having five credits no story is not an advice are we together is the necessary and sufficient condition to gain admission let me tell you life has requirements there is a cut off point the starting point is born again it's amazing how many people want to walk with God but they don't want to be born again they want to be around church they want to be around the things of God they want to have Christian names being born again is more than just confessing Jesus being born again is prioritizing God that God becomes your obsession your priority and your motivation there's no hope of leaving him that's born again because he, he, he explained it he said you must be born of two things the water and the spirit the water there represents the ministry of the word the cleansing power of the word an encounter with the holy ghost being born again is not just cheap talk where you just come and stand i believe in you you are pinching yourself and laughing it may be a starting point but i'm telling you being born again is much more than jesus becoming one of those important deities there is a herbalist at home there is jesus there is the charm it's just that he's the most important of all of them you are not born again please i'm saying this whether you are listening here and you are or you are following online if you have any other charm any other talisman any other material a point of reference point of of activating the realm of the spirit outside of christ and everything that is consistent with his character you are not born again very simple are we together dear you can't tell me you are born again and then under certain conditions you can receive something you know and many of us listen many of us young people you may be laughing at me but there's something they gave you from home they say look life this life is more than what you are seeing that is true you need help that is true but the, where the problem starts is what you are giving they pray for you and give you a bible and then they squeeze one charm that looks like an arrow they tell you to put it under your box you are not born again no sir see let me tell you anything that the lord jesus cannot bring in your life don't let anybody fool you that it will happen it may look like it's happening but you see because jesus said i am the door do you know what that means i am the legal access point to everything in the kingdom he never said i am the only one he said i am the door any other person can enter the house through windows but there is always a side effect you will not see it yet until the charm starts working so the charm will give you money and take your fertility are you getting the point now that's not the discussion with the herbalist he himself does not know the side effect because he's practicing so you collect the charm you start building the house but then you find out that you cannot give birth again or you give birth to 12 children and none of them become useful any other door listen there are many like this place now if we see you smuggling yourself through this window we know you are an armed robber you are a thief are we together there is a legitimate entrance don't tell me you are entering which way are you following jesus said i am the door i am the door don't tell me you are getting rich don't tell me you are getting blessed don't tell me you are increasing it matters to me whether you are following the door then i will know whether your success will have side effect on me let me tell you don't come close to anybody until you study the systems around his life and how he is doing what he is doing how she is doing what she is doing are we together now an encounter with jesus when you encounter jesus you will not only love him you will follow him you will not only love him you will serve him you will not only love him you will live for him you will not only love him you will influence others into that encounter with him has nothing to do with ministry has nothing to do with being a man of god it is the effect of an encounter when saul of Tarsus in the book of acts had an encounter with the lord jesus christ it changed his life forever remember what's the name of that short man in the bible zacchaeus 
when Zacchaeus had an encounter with Jesus what happened it changed his life forever Zacchaeus just come down I'm going to your house at once Zacchaeus changed when he met the centurion he changed there were other people I believe that Jesus met that were not recorded in the Bible because you see the way they had a soft spot towards him one of them was Joseph of Arimathea I believe he was a great man and because he was Caesar's friend you can liken it to being in the same political party so he would not be outspoken about Jesus but secretly secretly he loved him have you had an encounter with Jesus enough to fuel your life for a lifetime if the lifespan do you know it's a terrible thing when people love God on campus or love God before marriage I have seen many people who used to love God on campus you see them today they are hardly born again some were campus fellowship presidents some held crusades have you seen some of our parents you see them drinking beer and you say daddy do something about it say look I held crusade in Benin I held crusade in Abuja I did three days dry you see them giving you what is supposed to be a good accolade and they say I've tried everything so don't even bring this issue of man of God you are just starting before you were born we served God have you heard of Ebenezer Obey I was in his band have you heard of uh, so 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 and so I, I sang there they carry the pain of their frustration and make it look as though it's serving God that brought that to them it's a terrible thing for someone to say I once was with God and now I've left him no sir he said ye who have continued with me not those who started ye who have continued with me lift your voice in one minute and say Lord I'm with you forever I'm with you forever I'm with you forever mm. lift your voice and pray I need you to secure your place because some of us are already one leg in one leg out the pain of recession is about sweeping you ah Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you, how I prove the oracle. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh for grace to, to trust. Lift your voice and say, Lord, what shall separate me from your love? Not famine. Uh -uh. not CGPA not recession I am with you and I am with you forever whether things work well or not whether ministry works well or not is a decision I have made lift your voice and pray any other person can make his decision any other person can say anything Lord I know that I may be angry if I don't succeed but leaving you is not part of the equation it's a salt covenant it's a fraternity with you in life and in death I pledge allegiance to the land with all my strength with all I am I will see to honor his command I pledge sing it like a kingdom anthem from your heart I pledge
effect of an encounter you will raise your children after your encounter don't tell me you are a christian father are you hearing what i'm saying and you give birth to a child and then you don't care what the child is watching you don't care whether the child is going to church are we together many little children that's why i love our little ones in koinonia you may think they are not understanding what you are teaching but it's entering their spirit we live in a society where parents they, they just their assignment is just to give birth to children they give them education they give them every other thing but jesus are we together yeah you're going to church you leave the baby with a house help are we together you come back from church and you sit down other adults are watching certain things that may not be good for the child you don't care let me tell you if you have an, an encounter with jesus everything you do whoever is under your roof will do it oh come on you stay under my roof as i'm blasting tongues i want to hear your own in your room in your room you are responding you you don't stay under my roof i'm paying for your life and you are living your life then it means you are an adult enough if you stay under my roof you will serve jesus i assure you please take what i'm saying seriously our society is depraved today because many parents went to church but they did not have encounter so they only gave us what was valuable to them which was education as good as it is they didn't give us jesus some of us were on our way to destruction but god intercepted ah hallelujah you've heard me say it again and again when a lady brings a gentleman a lady brings a gentleman to her parents they don't ask whether he's born again and serious with god let me tell you in one minute i can know whether you are born again or not even if you wear suit ha, ha. this is a culture this is a culture are we together so we give our daughters to foolish men who are anti-kingdom we give our sons to wicked women who are anti-christ and we this this combination produces nonsense that's what is destroying our, our generation now what we are reaping is the carelessness of 30 years the carelessness of 40 years and if we do not correct it let me tell you the key is not insulting the government there must be a generation that is addicted and no nonsense about god imagine a man getting married with his wife two of them pray in tongues no problem two of them love god no problem as you give birth to your child before wicked men hold him you hold him as the father Shakata bakataya, you are prophesying what are you doing i'm prophesying oh stop that thing are you joking that's how i married in the first place i call you blessed you came out from my loins i prophesy you will everything is born after its kind i will not love god and give birth to an armed robber so you prophesy if i'm your father you should look like it i'm showing you what lack of an encounter has produced in our society to an extent to an extent that if you are godly they look at you as if something is wrong with your life you have to explain godliness something that should be institutionalized go outside of zaria and see a young lady if a young lady likes a guy do you know how she attracts him she starts singing bad and nonsense song thinking that's what he likes are you getting the point now so you sing all of the songs thinking that by singing that the guy will be attracted brother shout no way Abba. Abba. after reading proverbs 31 <laughs> ladies you two shout no way don't bring shell and nmpc and deceive anybody do you have an encounter with jesus listen don't just say i have an encounter with god god means anything do you have an encounter with jesus the son of the living god let me prove to you that a man has an encounter with jesus you are unashamed about submitting to his values if you have met jesus then
then you must be ready to submit to his values don't come and meet me with your philosophy your ideology you have not met jesus listen if you are here in koinonia if you are truly under this grace you should have submitted to our way of doing things so when you see somebody who is under this grace you know at once the way you talk the things you do your passion for god you can easily know someone who just came to koinonia for the first time sometimes people come to share testimonies here and once in a while they can be a bit unruly or a bit vulgar and i see the reaction in people it's like no 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 this is anti koinonia culture i can see it in you so why will you go out with somebody who just told you he's born again born again is like an id card you can see it is visible Kai, this 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 thing this thing is i'm speaking from my spirit some relationships should be cancelled yeah we cancel it in jesus name i'm not asking you you will see what will happen from the prophecy because some of you are insisting i cancel it in the name of jesus christ destroy your life in the name of love love is not stupidity are we together if you have had an encounter with jesus you must have the value system of the kingdom somebody comes to your house everything he's saying is nonsense every wrong word do you know there are words you don't even have to be born again societally speaking when you are getting to certain political positions they culture you when you when you are going to see the queen of england or they culture you you learn how to speak there are indices that show you have encountered god number one your words not just dressing your words you speak nonsense you say anything anytime you have come on please please all kinds of selection in your phone there is the one for when you are high you, you just take it high then whenever you feel guilty when you listen to messages on rapture the coming of christ you just switch truly you have not encountered jesus don't laugh as i'm telling you this because it's a serious thing you are not going to bribe God into fulfilling destiny. It has to be his way. Everybody say an encounter with Jesus. Now lift your voice and pray. And say Lord anything trying to prove in my life that I have not had an encounter. Drive it. Drive it far. Drive it far. Drive it far. Some of you need to make some calls to certain people. Call that gentleman and tell him. I love you but apostle just preached a message i can't marry you it can't work again sorry about the time i've wasted it can't work again it's as simple as that some of us who are about to get married some of us who have children it's time to get back bring the cross to your house bring christian values to your house don't live a life that is vulgar don't raise children that are wayward in discipline no sir no sir hallelujah listen listen you see these are the things that should be discussed in church i'm telling you this are we together yeah how many elders are not born again we just array the names of people when did this one join our church 1991 when did this one join our church 98 if we give this person and don't give this he'll be angry well let's give him something are you seeing that and then you now pick somebody just because he's old he's the elder in charge of marriage counseling you have never supervised what he's teaching the young people and they come around and he's teaching nonsense do you think all this idea of beating wife do you think people just invented it someone advised somebody and say i did it it worked do it it works let's return jesus to our lives oh. let's return jesus to our lives you know what i'm saying is not a lie give me you everything else can wait give me you i hope i'm not too late Praise the Lord. 
so please if you are here today at the end of the service i'll make an altar call please i want you to examine your concept of born again if you have not submitted to the values of the kingdom you need jesus please let's not argue this thing this night you need jesus i don't care whether you are praying in tongues no sir are we together then your life then your home if my shirt has palm oil you spill palm oil and you come with a white shirt and hug me and i hold you there if you leave won't you see some stain something about, show me what implicates you and shows us you have met jesus don't just say you met jesus the bible says in the book of acts in the jerusalem council when they saw peter they saw these guys they knew they were timid but they knew they had been with jesus they saw them when they were timid but now they had seen them men of conviction let's sit down and continue an encounter with jesus number one number two now that we have cleared the way i want us to sit down and talk now because this second point that i want to bring is really where the anointing is this night so what you have even received now is an appetizer here comes the main course may you eat it every part of it in jesus name the second key the second key to fulfilling your destiny the second key to fulfilling your god-given destiny is the power of preparation and thoroughness write it down the power of preparation and thoroughness preparation thoroughness preparation thoroughness the power of preparation the power of thoroughness second chronicles 27 please verse 6 second chronicles 27 verse 6 second chronicles 27 i like us to read it is projected one to read so dotham became uh-huh because he prepared his ways before the lord what was the secret of his exploits what was the secret of his might he prepared his way and he did that in the presence of god under his supervision preparation there is power in preparation write it down there is power in preparation we live in a time and a generation especially for we young people there is such an obsession for manifestation such an obsession for manifestation oh let me prove i'm a millionaire by age 20 let me prove i'm this and that let me prove there's nothing wrong with those things but preparation preparation there is such an appetite of bringing our future into our today to prove a point and we destroy ourselves because we lack that ingredient of preparation what do you do during preparation number one what do you do during preparation number one you learn and understand the principles of the kingdom i call them the mysteries of the kingdom that's what you do during times of preparation your times of preparation are largely times of learning and understanding the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom God has called me into an extraordinary ministry. God has told me I have an apostolic or a prophetic ministry. God has told me I'm going to the nations. Every time in my dream, I see myself changing people. Thank you, man of God. But what are you doing about it? Oh, I'm already buying suits. God has even shown me who my wife will be. That's not preparation. You are, that's carelessness. I assure you, you will not arrive that way. Preparation. This great ministry that God is giving me, what will it take? what do i know do i understand administration do i understand finances this great ministry will be fueled by the word and by the anointing have i understood the mysteries listen i want you to put your life on a project 
find out all the tools you will be using in the place of destiny and begin to source for them find out there are many tools we need you need the anointing in the place of destiny have you discovered how to bring it and keep it in your life and multiply it in your life number two you need access to revelation the working knowledge of the word of god what keys do you have in your hand show me the keys you are accessing and i'll see whether you will get to your tomorrow finances our destinies are capital intensive so they require a lot of finances show me what mentorship show me what book you are reading oh apostle i'm doing business you will fail that's not the key the key is to receive knowledge the key is to change your mindset not to offer products and services yet that's the last step of the equation we love manifestation we love manifestation i receive text messages all the time and most of what people we, we, we like programs we like events conferences conventions someone sent me a text that he had a vision that we're holding six conventions in koinonia every year i said shift that vision to the future it's certainly not happening now no convention for what what is the meaning of the word convention what is the meaning of the word conference we abuse these things because we do rituals without revelation are we together now now is the time for building please hear me now is not the time for buying suits now is the time for buying books now is the time for buying the experiences of people now is the time for buying the pain of people buy their experiences preparation i see many people who say they want to be men of god i don't criticize them but i'm just laughing because most people think all there is to ministry is to have the ability to throw somebody down you are joking if it was that easy i guarantee you people will not be suffering Benihin came around Nigeria and you see the number of desperate people we all flocked in waiting to receive an anointing what does that tell you is scarce genuine power is scarce make no mistakes about it do you know why many people do not rise we are comfortable with average average will only bring you in the scene but never distinguish you reward is for those who are distinguished not those who are present <laughs> is god speaking to someone there is power in preparation let me tell you when i started out in ministry i didn't do many of the things many people are doing in life no no that time ask Jimmy. i used to walk with a bag remember my black bag it had bible it had my books the books the speakings of god to my life i would always walk with it those were the times you see people who buy tape or they post tape maybe pastor chris any other tape and they are small rechargeable they will raise all their money and buy rechargeable not not many of us seated here you do not have any device for hearing the word of god you don't but you have clothes you're a young lady of 19 20 you have clothes of a married woman of 35 it's not wise it's, it's a terrible it's an extended version of foolishness are we together you you must take your destiny serious this thing does not happen by magic god is not a charm he's not a genie you've got to be serious some of us as you keep your bible like this is friday that you pick it again and yet you move around i am i i, I hope to be called let's see which one uh, prophet apostle i will use pastor you are dreaming <laughs> are we together one gentleman sent me a text during miracle service that he was coming i said who are you he says a man of god somewhere i said that's all right you are welcome then he sent me a text he says inform me so that they'll put a special reservation for him in front i said my brother this front seat you see is a testimony the front seat is not a wish it's a testimony this is a testimony you you come and sit down the seat will reject you 
have you seen that kind of thing where people kings come and sit down they say somebody dies you don't sit down and sit unprepared sir no preparation i look at your prayer life and i know whether you are preparing you want to be able to stand and preach that's what kills a lot of men of god they have not built that spiritual capacity don't you know that praying in tongues is like doing business you are making an investment of strength into your future a time will come you will not have the time to do 10 hours every day again i can't pray for 10 hours every day i'll be an irresponsible man of god because there are things to do but there were times i would stay morning till night i was building strength he said eat for the journey is far brothers and sisters some of you now is the time to lock yourself you may look stupid but you are building an extraordinary ministry you're already in prayer band two weeks you say they don't know me please sit down jare and, and work on your destiny all this quest for recognition recognition i think they should know me no sit down sit down there is power in preparation let your competence announce you let the grace upon your life announce you you cannot light a lamp and put it under a bushel but you also cannot put a lamp that is not lit on top all this quest for manifestation please hear the voice of the lord tonight that's not the way to do it that's not the way to do it someone asked me a question i think i don't know if it was a year or two ago and said apostle what are you doing with your life now i told him i said i am preparing for an extraordinary life he said preparing i said exactly uh, you think this thing i'm doing is ministry this is industrial attachment my goodness my goodness my goodness this is not close to what i've seen in the visions of the lord it doesn't even look like it compared to the koinonia god showed me this is a, a cave we are just waking up are you that inspired or have you started clapping for yourself and you want to build a camp around it affect my life breathe on me i look to you for life affect my life breathe on me i look to you for life affect my life breathe on me I look to you for life. Affect my life. We don't I look to you for life. Let me come to your house and your room. Show me your library. And I see how serious you are with knowledge. Books are very important. They are a communication of your value for knowledge. When you buy a book, you are not buying paper. You are buying a man's pain. You are, you, are, you, are, you are buying access to a man's testimony. People's mistakes at a platter of gold for you to study and understand. There are many people who don't read. Let me tell you, how you know you are not preparing for your destiny is excessive idleness. When I see a young man who is idle, you must be lazy or you are not preparing. Do you know the urgency? Number one, for most of us, over 95% of us, a mistake has already been made in our foundation. I hope you know. Some of us got born again at 26, 27. You are already behind. At age 14, Mary was giving birth to Jesus. You are 25, you are not born again. You are already behind schedule. Why should you be roaming up and down? In broad daylight, you move around and you see people just taking sugar cane, gisting, and then they come to someone else's house. How are you? I was just strolling. Are you free? And then they are offended when you say you are not free. Everybody say, I'm going somewhere. Say it, I'm going somewhere. And now is the season of preparation. I will prepare. You want to be a millionaire? Let me see the preparation. Let me see the preparation. Show me the character traits you are building that will qualify God to grant you access to such wealth. You want to be an extraordinary leader? Show me those you are receiving mentorship from. You are moving around, not doing anything. Ladies, hear me. Don't be under pressure. The next thing in your life after school is not just marriage. Thank God for marriage. But build yourself. Focus on preparation than manifestation. 
you are not qualified to receive anything you are not prepared for preparation preparation settle down prepare Lord you said you are going to give me the nations Walk on my character Let me become an exceptional man of God Lord at this small level of ministry They are already criticizing me I can imagine the criticisms on great men Like Papa Oyedeko and Adeboye Lord build me You have already told me That my ministry will have branches All over the nations of the earth Can I survive the criticism that takes That, that having that kind of anointing will bring don't you know it's, it's, it's risky to be rich? Do you know the criticisms? Somebody will look at you and say, young people like this, they, they, they touch something. You are right. You are right. Nobody becomes rich just by doing nothing. They've criticized you small. Somebody just looked and said, I don't like Pastor Femi's shirt. And he's, he's angry. He's quarreling. He said, no, no, what is wrong with my shirt? Ah, and then you now want to be a leader over two million people you want to die ask moses moses the meekest man on earth he was angry and about to kill himself god said calm down that's how ministry is have you ever gone to god for prayer and god said no that's how it is so i hope you know that that there is no breakthrough for this prayer is how it works hey, 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 hey. <laughs> yeah. very interesting friend who wanted to organize crusade one time the guy was passionate about souls he was not passionate about finances so he wanted to organize crusade I, after the prayer fasting visions everything he didn't even start because there was nothing to start with he couldn't even start i told him i said well these are the logistics that are part of ministry And he was so disappointed and angry because in his mind I was the sponsor of that crusade I said no way God did not give me any vision I am not the ram and the scapegoat you had from God flog out your way of funding that vision brothers and sisters preparation is powerful when you go through you read books and you see how a man of God will tell you 12 years in his life nothing worked and then you say that I'm four years that means there's hope for me that means it's not unusual it's not like I don't have faith let's continue going you study about a man who built his conglomerate he will tell you he built 20 companies and they failed he was the 21st one that is the one that is blessing you and you say I just built three and they failed ah there's hope for me you are learning preparation is giving you strength a time will come they look at you and they say you claim to be a man of God's wife look at your husband his mouth is looking dry you are not feeding him and you say oh, but husband am I not feeding you you didn't prepare because if you prepared you would have studied other men of God's wife and they would have told you this thing is normal so as they are insulting you you just say oh so that's how it is your spirit has been prepared anything you cannot take now is because you are not preparing you will see a man of God lying down and think the place is cold. You lie down there and the heat will burn you because your skin. You know what they used to do for masquerade? They say they used to cook them so that nothing will happen. Allow preparation cooking. So that while somebody is shouting now and saying, do you know Apostle is a herbalist? Do you, I know the woman that gave him power. And then you come and tell me as a, as a concern. I say, Apostle, I respect you. They are spoiling your name and then I laugh. <laughs> I would have cried in 2006 or 7 but now oh come on prophesy to yourself say myself grow up say it myself grow up there are many needless struggles we are going through because we are not prepared you are not the first to be criticized are we together you are not the first to go through challenges you are not the first to go through disappointment it's only because you have not studied others who had worse cases so you don't have a basis for comfort god is speaking to someone tonight preparation 
some of us are confused where we are now you don't know whether to start a church you don't know whether to start a prayer group you are not the first to start ministry go and examine the top 20 ministries how did they start there was a day it was in their mind did they start a church service bishop oyedeko did not want to start a church because at that time there were already too many churches based on him so your confusion about should i start a branch fellowship is because of your level and your thinking you are not the first to think like that when you learn that you will appreciate mentorship because you bring your mountain and somebody just walks on it and says, ah, is it this mountain i remember 1981 go and read the book there is there is a solution for that mountain oh man of god our ministry is about to be thrown out now we are owing 30 million i said just 30 million i'm compl complaining in 91 we we're owing 500 million and then you now sit down you are hearing a man talking to you and he says look let me tell you what to do pray give a seed and go to bed nothing is as bad as it is and then you conquer that i remember when one time um we held a little program and i was going thirty thousand thirty thousand i was sweating i didn't know what to do with my life thirty thousand it was from one book money somebody loaned us it was so terrible i remember the day it was even late dr bimbo dukoya's books when they brought her to zaria 2005 after organizing the program now very nicely his presence in worship are we together now there was no i mean the whole thing and they needed the money by nine o'clock nine o'clock by seven o'clock i don't i'm not sure i had up to 500 i was sweating around i didn't know what to do so now you are owing eight thousand and you are moving around my blood i, I think i'm having high blood pressure calm down calm down there is something preparation will teach you that you stand up and walk god is speaking to someone it is comforting to see those who have gone through what you are going through times 10 find out what they did to come out preparation and dotan became mighty unmovable let me tell you i have studied the life of men in ways you cannot imagine studying their life built great comfort in me many of them were 10 times as ignorant as i am now yet they were able to go through some things and i said no at this level i even know more there's no reason why i should fidget it will work to work you are not the first to get married you are planning for marriage and you just say ah, my budget is 1.5 eh? dr jenny 1.5 you are seeing a man with two children you will not ask questions sir two children means you married what happened what did you do you know see it's pride to think your problem is new to everybody it's pride what is a mountain to you is a valley to someone you are not the first to have carryover hey will i stay or will they drive me please go to bed there are people who have taught this lad you are seeing left right and center to a point that they just look at the board and say glory be to god oh. fear is as a result of ignorance and is partly a product of not preparing you have ignored the pain and the sacrifice of others somebody's pain you have ignored is why you are afraid today because if you buy their materials and study their lives you will learn their pain koinonia was not built in a day many of you have never cared to ask the story behind it because you don't care all you know is that you are enjoying there will be workers dinner and it's free paid for just dress well and come i say i like koinonia i like a ministry that takes care of us like this there was a story there was a story behind it preparation you learn the principles of the kingdom preparation that's the time of trial and error please hear me that's the time when you are you are learning to handle the keys of the kingdom like a baby trying to hold a key and open a door you will use wrong keys you will use wrong keys it's in the place of preparation you will know how the anointing works so god will keep building you you will read the books you will listen to the messages then one day you and god will go on small it somebody will now say please pastor femi can you just pray for our little group and say ah me I mean you are even calling me pastor and then on that day you will pray some things will happen others will not happen 
you will first go with confidence you are fasted dry it's even dry you went for the meeting and then you go there before you start preaching somebody's already shouting and you're like eh, that means this thing is easy then every other person you lay hands on now doesn't fall and i said what's the confusion i didn't lay hands on anybody somebody was shouting the ones i now in direct contact with the anointing so preparation you now go back in one message you are hearing you will hear a mystery that explains that operation say, ah this is what i did wrong you have learned you are learning you are learning are we together you are learning about finances god told you you'll be a multi-millionaire ceo all that you've held home and abroad in your entire life is hundred thousand and you are working one day god will give you it somebody will just send you four hundred thousand and say please can you keep it for me for two weeks and you find out your body is shaking you can't sleep you will get up you are moving up and down you say ah, should i touch this money and pay back quickly you see a revelation that you are not qualified you are beginning to see the effect of money then you learn from that preparation that money is a spirit it's not just notes it can do something to you and you are now thinking 200 thousand is in my account and i cannot sleep what will happen if 200 million is in my account then you begin to respect every man who you see sitting down he's a millionaire but he's drinking a bottle of water it took discipline to conquer that what are you what are you ignoring by refusing preparation is god speaking to someone you are preparing you want to be a good wife in the process of preparation you will read a book and see that a man of god's wife she will now say god told me when god told me my husband did not yet know and god was sending me to women to go and cook with them and you say ah the holy spirit will tell you now go and do likewise you will now say ah auntie shade please can i come to your house just to help you and while you are washing place you are asking her questions and she's answering what happens when a great man is angry as a good wife how do you treat if your husband is a public figure how do you shield him you are not learning you are only saying this brother god has been speaking you are not seeing me you will never see you because god is not a wicked god to carry his servant laboring and just give you no you prepare you prepare say amen stop claiming things carelessly sit down and prepare and before you know it you will see them in your hands i respect people who are mighty yet understand the power of preparation there are people you see in this koinonia mighty men and women in the spirit very mighty you just see them quiet some of them have had one-on-one -on -one encounter with them their prayer life fire their word like fire the maturity and wisdom upon their life is uncommon nobody even knows them they are quiet god is preparing them one day you just see god will carry one brother and give them and say, ah, where is this one coming from are you joking nobody comes from nowhere people are preparing quietly you are the only one standing where pe prepared people are standing but you are not prepared I receive grace to prepare lift your voice and pray i receive grace lord i see how i've been shortchanging myself i've been acting like i've arrived i've been trying to look rich i've been trying to look anointed by this teaching tonight oh god i receive grace grace koinonia pray i stop complaining about what is not working i value the pain of those who have gone ahead of me and I make up my mind to draw from them. Shakata baratakaya, leke prons kebariata lakoto subahaya. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. A pastor sent me a text, and the pastor was really complaining. He said, "Man of God, God is increasing us in ministry, but right now I just discovered every other thing in my life has died. My prayer life has died." my word life has died i still see miracles i still see great things but i'm so disorganized i used to be an organized person and i told him i said you are still using the mindset you you were using when you were starting ministry are we together do you know what it means for a very busy person to still maintain his prayer life there is a technique it's not just as the spirit leads there is a system how do you maintain a prayer life reading chapters of the bible when from morning till night you are walking how do you balance that 
as an influential person you are married with two three children how do you maintain your spiritual life how do you maintain a good fatherhood and a, you're a good husband you are not the first to go through it find out there are people who are flawlessly effective find out there are men of God who preach five six messages every week and everything is new you want you are already tired your little fellowship in one state somewhere maybe just two or three branches and it's already killing you yet people like dr paul and running six services every sunday two services every week intermittently they can travel to europe and come back in the morning find out there is a system there is a system otherwise it will kill you john g lake did not understand that he did well in ministry and died in his family life what is the secret of men of god who are effective in family their schedules are packed full everything i remember when we started i didn't know that there was a protocol department that handled ministrations and made things easy i used to handle them by myself you bring your letter you come and give me I look at it I say okay let me go and pray about it at a point there were several letters I said yes to many people I'll say yes I'm coming to your church yes I'm coming to your fellowship I will not even remember I found out that I had to prepare four five messages in a week it was weighing me down I said it's not like I don't have what to say but I can't stand before God's people and preach what I know God is not leading me to say I can preach any nice sermon but will it be effective are we together what do you not know i'm drawing you to a point your pain today is because you have ignored preparation somewhere then i began to study i got bishop wede post books towards excellence in life and ministry i got that what that Hayward mills book church administration and management i got some of their just books pastoring without tears i got some of these materials and sat down when I began to study, I said, ah, so this is how it works. I've been killing myself for no reason. Are we together? Killing myself for no reason. I remember when I had to be under pressure to answer everybody's call. It was like I'm a receptionist. Somebody will call and say, is this apostle? I just want to know. And for five minutes, you are arguing with the person. Is this apostle? If it's not apostle, please don't waste my time. And it's my credit to I'm now calling. I say, "Is apostle, say, Tor, apostle? Please, do you have time? Because what I'm about to tell you is is boiling in my spirit, and I'll now carry my big head and say, "Yes, I have time." And for 30 minutes, while you are talking, another text is entering, another call, and I find out that sometimes you can stay three hours. You are just answering call, and you are fagged out. You are fatigued. Someone who finishes work, he will walk well, have a nice time with his wife, go to church, and come back, then call you that's when you now want to rest then others started calling by one or two because they found out that i don't sleep in the night they will now call and say apostle sorry you they just go ahead i used to feel so guilty if i'm sleeping and my phone is ringing i feel so bad until i read a man of god's book that delivered me now it can ring if it's an emergency call the police yeah People would threaten me and say man of god pride pride you've not gotten anywhere you used to respond to us before you even used to send us recharge card but now you are you are getting arrogant i will feel so bad i'll say but god please search my heart until i found out that that's how people are it's not like they are just becoming it for me they are like that everywhere i just said ah please go to bed ah somebody's already gaining wisdom gaining wisdom so when you walk out of here and you say, see what she's wearing you say why does everybody hate me no you are not the only one it's like that you are just discovering it you are just discovering it i don't know why everybody talks about me everybody is there something wrong ah if if you are looking at your legs you will cut two of your legs because there are too many people who can talk ah god is giving us wisdom preparation 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 there are some of us married people people come to your house you are under pressure to cook for them and give them everything because let, let them not say we are not good let them say oh let them say 
because you will find lousy people they'll come to your house is there pepper soup in this house you will think they are joking they really mean it you will rush go to the market buy, buy cow you think it's just a joke you are not learning to grow up you need to listen to people who have learned to manage people like that two o'clock they'll come again they'll say sorry yo, we are here again is there still something for us then you will read a book that one determined young man one day walked up to them and said please visitor we have we have a program in this house there are times we have bible study there are times i'm just spending time with my wife there are times we are spending time with the children it is important to let us know you are coming man said what is there what do you think you are leave him let him go carry his trouble and go at least you are free now There is something you need to know to set you free. Most of this depression we are having is because there's something you don't know. So you sit down there and think people are talking about you. What will they be saying about me? What would they say? Do well, they will talk. Don't do well, they will talk. So be used to it and enjoy your life. You see what preparation does for you. So you create a system of joy that is independent of the things around you. And you become a motivated leader. And everybody looks at you and says, wow, this guy is a leader worthy of emulation. Then your ministry increases because you have learned how to motivate people into excellence. Say amen. You have to learn the principles of the kingdom. Very quickly, there are four areas still under the second point. There are four areas that you must work on. Four areas that you must work on. Number one, you must contend for a comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom generally. As regards understanding the word of God and applying it, understanding the word of God and applying it, you must contend for that mystery. You must know how to apply scripture to your life. If you want to be great, use your times of preparation to learn how to make the word of God work. Number two, you must contend for the secret to the anointing. In your place of preparation, you must find out. You cannot, um, it has nothing to do with ministry. You want to be great in life without knowing how the anointing comes, you are joking. So in your place of preparation, you have to find out. This anointing that has been responsible for the greatness of many, how does it come? Number three. You must find out principles of leadership and administration. I know you are a man of God. But you are going to have leaders. I know you are a businessman. But it will not always be popcorn forever. A day will come you have companies with offices. You must understand principles of leadership and administration. Number three, you must understand finances. You must, in your place of preparation, you must study finances. No matter how much of a man of God you are, a businessman, a father, you must, this is a tool. I'm mentioning for you the tools that you will use to fulfill destiny. You need it. Study on finances. Don't just be a money monger. Don't just be a hustler. Don't just be obsessed about money and business. Understand the system. Understand how this thing works understand the challenges the vicissitudes that surround it are we together number four the last thing you must understand is people and relationships people and relationships brothers and sisters if you don't understand people and relationships you will die like a chicken they asked bishop Oyedeko years ago they said what's the greatest source of challenge and pain in your life he said people they said what's the greatest motivation in your life he said people do you know the reason for many discouragement is people what they have said the reason for your encouragement the same people you must understand people get my message understanding people mastering relationships and then the prophetic implication of association you have to learn that i got a book years ago that changed my life how to win friends and influence people by dale kennedy right it blessed me it opened my eyes to the psychology of human relationships it helped me understand people thoroughly to know how to relate with different kinds of people you need this in your life otherwise you will get a job and after two weeks you are angry with everybody because you will meet sarcastic people 
even as a man of God you are going to meet people in your church people who are very disloyal to you you need to learn what to do with them you are going to meet people who are very anointed but rebellious you are going to meet people who are very submissive but careless and less as fair all these people you have to work with them you get a job you are going to work with lazy people you are going to work with very cunning people people who are corny they will bribe and kill you if need be for promotion you've got to understand the ethics of working with people maintaining relationships number three the last point action the last key to opening up your prophetic destiny is action the power of action so number one is an encounter with Jesus number two is the power of preparation number three is action the power of sustained action now by action I don't just mean movement action means the relevant steps that you take action takes courage write it down when you are about to take action over your life your business your ministry it takes courage to act brothers and sisters there are things you are going to be doing in your life you will be the first person to do it in your entire family it takes action it takes courage joshua chapter one he said be strong and of good courage nobody has ever gone to school in your family you are the first to do it there is fear i was i was talking with, i can't remember who i was talking with now we're discussing the subject of fear and i told him there are two dimensions of fear there is fear as a result of the presence of the spirit of fear there is fear as a result of stepping into the unknown you must distinguish them are we together now there is the fear as it is as the presence of a demon spirit you cast that one out god has not given us that spirit of fear but every time you are doing something new or something extraordinary that that ability to push through something that is new will bring fear it's not unusual there are many of us here who have gone through certain sustained seasons of preparation but action action are we together you are the first person in your house to get a job and for many months you have not submitted an application because you are used to everything being done free for you are we together you've not submitted any application and the lord is telling you stand up and go to benin and submit your application say ah god no 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 no. who is going to pay my money where am i going to stay you have to summon courage to get up and take bold steps in life are we together courage courage action requires persistence there are certain times your first step will be the wrong one but it doesn't mean you are wrong the step may be wrong but you are not wrong start the business start the church start the ministry action requires courage action requires persistence there is an ugly ideology in the church that the moment people start things and fail people rally around them are you sure it's god and they destroy people's destinies how many great businesses would have stood but for the advices from churches how many great destinies there are people who who left who left certain precious jobs that god gave them simply because of an advice if they are shouting at you like that is he worth it and then you leave it and now you are suffering are we together number three action requires a system now this is very important you don't just act carelessly you act based on a system you build a system you build a system around your action for instance when it's now time for you God has called you and God has anointed you and told you it's time you now sit down there there is a system you can start a prayer group a prayer fellowship as God is bringing people they are getting healed they are getting blessed God is lifting you God is bringing people into your life most of the people God is bringing are not your members stop calling them your members and sons and daughters they are your leaders in the making are we together 
God never sends members he sends leaders they will come as drunkards they will come as troublemakers your assignment is to prove your apostleship make them become what you have seen in the vision they will not come ready-made action you must build a system around it we had a system like that when he and i was starting we'll get people born again there was a system you got filled with the holy spirit and then we were praying and so when people got born again in one week they were already on fire a system around your business you may now say okay let me now build a system i separate business money from my personal finances maybe i open an account for business i need to be serious now not that any money that comes is for the eating you don't know which one is for your shop which one is for you so you eat everything and then you calculate and say somebody is stealing somewhere no no so i remember hundred thousand enter why is there sixty thousand you ate it it's your account system all the great empires in the world all the great destinies that you see the uncommon lives in ministry in politics in influence in any area of life were built this way this is the way people become great they have an encounter with jesus that encounter brings them to a submission to his values and the next thing they they plant themselves under a ministry or a platform or a spiritual family are, are you getting the progression now this so that when you get people born again you know what to do with them when people have an encounter with jesus the next assignment is to create a structure or plant them under the bible says they that be planted in the house of god they shall flourish in the courts of our god he said in old age they shall be fat and flourishing hallelujah just like you are seated now now you are hearing this you are taking steps based on what i'm teaching you will go back now and because there is an anointing upon what i'm saying you will not ignore it as you go back it will burn like fire in your spirit you will begin to make decisions that are consistent with it are we together now and you begin to see your life rise you begin to see yourself improve then you can know that i'm going to be a good man not just because i think i am good i have studied the system that makes men good then I know I'm going to be a blessed man not just because I hate poverty I've studied the system I know I'm going to be extraordinarily anointed not just because I'm, I want to gyrate myself no 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 I've understood the system at that point you can look at life and smile it's called mastery you can rise to a point where you look at life and smile and know that I have a great destiny I have a great destiny and you look at your life after 20 30 years and it's nothing short of a life of glorious impact on eagle's wings a book written by bishop david Oedipo, i think to celebrate the 30 years anniversary of living faith then or so i looked at everything the progression on how he started and i said this is it consistent i have studied many great men of god that's how they started Benny Hinn, Dr. Mike Mudok, Miles Munro, all the great men that represent great mentors and fathers in my life. I look at their lives and I see consistently, consistently. There were times in their lives they were for many years. It's like things did not happen. Even living faith with the kind of speed that it is experiencing now, there was a time it was stagnated. So you find out because at this point your ministry is not moving. So you go back. What did they do? Oh, they fasted, they prayed, they met together as leaders, they readjusted certain things. Fine. Papa Iya Deboe, there was a time redeemed was doing well but it was taunted and god told him that redeem needed to get to all the nations but as it were redeem could not cross certain cultures he could not go beyond the south and he went to the lord and then the lord gave him a formula he gave him a secret let him know that when you are dealing with global leadership you must have respect for people's culture and ideology it's quite selfish to want people to completely bend to subscribe to your culture kingdom culture yes but your your sociological culture and paradigm it may not be possible with every place and so he opened up and painfully created that flexibility so you can see one redeemed branch 
that looks like a contemporary um, uh, uh, church and all of that and then you see another redeemed branch youthful another redeemed branch still you know holding on to certain values he just focused on the core values that represented the foundation of the ministry to preserve it but then gave the flexibility and now redeemed is everywhere festival of life in uk is as if i mean you see them everywhere there france everywhere redeemed because of that secret you can now look at that why is my church not growing ah and god opens your eyes through that light and you now see it oh the reason why my church is not growing is because um i i i hold on to my values but probably i i impose every value both spiritual cultural sociological on people and that value is restraining people that may be just the key you need to adjust and then all of a sudden you find out that your ministry becomes a habitable place for people action action god is challenging some of us to take action you need to take action over your finances you need to take action there are different action steps you can take you can begin to read books every day you can listen to messages every day you can get up and subscribe to direct mentorship as much as god grants you grace you may need to settle down tell yourself i'm starting that business next month i'm starting it i have prepared i have paid my price i am starting it i will start it or you can say this month of november is dedicated to scattering my cvs around i will anoint it i will pray i brought it for miracle service they have prayed for it now god is waiting on me i will scatter it all around hallelujah action we are enjoying koinonia today because of the power of action we are enjoying what god has done today because of the power of action listen when will the generations tied to your grace reap the benefits of the action you are taking or otherwise whether or not you move time is moving whether or not you move time is moving it is important to move with it time is premium the only way to redeem it is to use it well you don't save time you use it well you redeem it by investing properly in it koinonia i bring you a word today there is a prophetic destiny for you in christ you have been escorting men some of you after tonight you've got to sit down brothers look at me after tonight some of you when you go back home don't sleep you need to carry a chair and sit down outside and just carry a clean sheet of paper and say what am i doing with my life this is not the way it's supposed to work you have been joking around your destiny you are getting old things are not working there is nothing working in your life finances you don't know anything about it fatherhood you don't know anything about it that sense of maturity leadership you've not built anything time is going you have to give yourself a sense of urgency a day will come god will demand accountability for the grace and the life and the power and the strength that he has given you he said i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day for the night cometh it's time for you to begin to study the bible it's time for you to begin to study the bible you want to become a great man of god you don't know the bible you're going to crash land you will be tired your members will be weary they will leave your church and go somewhere else simply because you do not have the word you are not instant in season he tapped elijah and said eat for the journey is far. i want to round up are you preparing are you preparing for your life sister are you looking for a man or are you preparing for marriage brother do you want to marry by fire by force or are you preparing marriage means a wife marriage means children marriage means the troubles that can come from in-laws have you positioned your spirit to manage it marriage means leadership i want to start a business ceo ceo of what have you studied it i want to become a great man of god i want to be president and founder or geo all that one is stories uneasy lies the head that wears the crown are we together listen i made a decision 
years ago today now makes it um, not today but 2016 makes it uh, 14 years 14 years when I made a quality intentional decision now I'd been working with God I'd been doing certain things but when I made up my mind to do what I'm teaching you now 14 years ago so when you see this today it's a product of 14 years of consistency with the Holy Ghost there were many other things that had happened before that time but I made up my mind I said from today I will not be irresponsible from today I started studying and making a decision over my finances and my journey 12 years ago two years after I started my journey with purpose I started my journey with finances listen not every time is conducive for everything you must redeem the time you hear me saying this thing redeem the time please don't let anybody just come to your house and come and waste your time with gisting and gossiping that does not make sense early in the morning you are supposed to be praying six o'clock there in your house because you stay in the same compound bros how are you day then please please don't, what, what is that shout please i'm happy today's a glorious day take it easy bros you don't cook you don't do this just speaking tell him please i plan to be a leader take it easy all this your vulgar statements and the rest i appreciate you but take it easy don't come to my house and come and do everything you want to do no You begin to dress well you begin to be serious about your life are we together now yeah actions that reflect your destiny you stop excessively spending money anyhow this has action steps that some of you need to take make up your mind that from today no fake life i'm not ashamed if all i can take is gary now i'm not going to say others are taking rice uh -uh by god's grace i will take gary honorably any lady that cannot like me taking gary now does not deserve to eat my rice with me i will continue moving no pressure no pressure god has given me two members i will guard them jealously and teach them with all my heart and love them no competition are we together now i open an account i'm saving i am disciplined can't be a student and you are buying with one of ten thousand 15,000 it's not wise you are destroying your future that 15,000 can buy you a book 15 plus one secret to a happy home I think something like that uh, uh, Dr. Mrs. is an engine 500 naira 1,000 you change your life are we together God blesses you with 10,000 naira you go and buy materials and dress well dress well you don't look irresponsible please i'm challenging us we are going to pray but i need to be sincere with you you look well you dress smart you start learning certain ethics when you are going before the presence of a great man you don't look foolish you destroy yourself now you begin to learn that not every opportunity opens every time there are some of you here brothers you don't have one good suit one good suit you can budget for it one good suit so that the day god opens a door you have something nice keep wearing all these rags that people wear around looking like fools and then you smile around it no you will never be great that way are we together you come to a point in your life where you begin to act responsibly when you see ladies you respect them you don't talk like a fool speak everything and no 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 no, no. you act like you are preparing to get married there are some of you i see you you are still acting like children although you are matured You begin to act responsibly you see someone's child falling down you create a sense of responsibility oh let me help this person you are taking action that is opening doors for you you see a man that is anointed you don't just stand let's see what he's saying pastor Alpha, what does he even have to say no the law of honor see there is a way you look at someone you know he has grown up you know he has grown up are we together let's take steps for our destiny you may not like what i'm teaching you tonight but just like others who are saying thank you now you will say thank you tomorrow i guarantee you 
you may not like me for what I'm teaching you now because for some of you I'm challenging you listen there are some of you especially ladies because you are very beautiful your beauty makes it such that anybody who comes around you likes you so there's nobody to really tell you the truth my name is Joshua Selman I'm telling you you have to settle down and be serious with your life you cannot float around a destiny full of flattery somebody has got to tell you this is wrong this is right the person who challenges you is the person who loves you god is using me to do for us now what some of us did not get at home and i will do it well you may not if you like don't hate me no problem but you will thank me tomorrow i love you too much to leave you the way you are stop all this childish play stop all this this irresponsible things people do around gossiping around misbehaving some of you are you have already collected phone on credit go and return it you don't need that kind of lifestyle oh please hey jimmy uh, can i use your trouser for two weeks no you are you are acting like a child can i use your shirt i like your phone can you borrow me i'm traveling somewhere all these things are attitudes of children when i was a child I thought like a child I acted like a child I spoke like a child now that I'm a man what do I do I lay aside these childish things have you laid aside these childish things or are you just growing old maturity let me come into your room or your house or whatever and see it nice I look at you and I see how careful you are I don't come into your house and I see your fridge spoiled, your TV spoiled, your table dirty, your carpet dirty. And I just see how you say, ah, apostle, you are welcome. May his presence. No, no, no. You are not showing responsibility. That's the same way you will be an irresponsible man. The fridge will spoil. You say my wife will fix it. You are not already assuming responsibility. God cannot give you a great ministry. You can't fix your fridge of 1,000 naira. You want to fix lives? No, sir. Are we together? You wear clothes that are torn and dirty. You don't care. No, sir. You have to behave well. Say in the name of Jesus. From today, I make up my mind that I will fulfill destiny. Say it again. From today, I make up my mind that I will fulfill destiny. Give me two more minutes and then we'll pray. How about bad friends? I can't round up without talking about that show me your association and I show you your true values show me your association whether you went to the same primary school secondary school it was your chief um, 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 your, your best man whatever <laughs> love you God I want to say chief bridesmaid praise God all this solidarity to wrong friends you've got to make up your mind you see i've been saying this thing do you know some of us if only you can leave your bad friends your journey to a good life starts especially for us ladies especially for us ladies you love god but the moment you meet them they come with their wrong ideologies and then they force you to have to believe it you just came back from church and now you are making up your mind i will be responsible and someone go, hey jeez day oh ladies can I sit down you know that's what you just repented of but because of the presence of that friend he said Todd, just tell me and you now keep listening before you know it you go back to your vomit again may god deliver you this night the courage to let people know you are serious about your destiny see i don't know what is it this our ego thing is what we have refused to take out of the way if i tell this person sorry you are interrupting my destiny they will feel bad they will criticize me so what so what make up your mind are we together make up your mind this night in the name of the lord jesus christ make up your mind and say things will change i pray that you will really change in the name of jesus christ i pray that you will really change in the name of jesus christ there are many other things we need to change about some of you have up to 20 relationships consciously you don't care to you it's a symbol that you are a fine girl say do you know all these guys are dying i guarantee you none of them will marry you for you to be that careless with your life they will ask you out but when they are ready to marry they will come to church the brother will repent and dress well and come and look for a quiet lady 
who loves God. Every man, stupid or sensible, wants peace in his house. Are we together? Yeah. So some of us pride ourselves. There are good brothers coming. They love God. They fear God. They are coming. But you are there busy doing your emotional razzmatazz with all kinds of people. You are growing old. God will open doors for the brothers. The brothers you see today that cannot buy a good shoe, they will buy what will open your mouth tomorrow. And by that time, they will not be ready to marry you. They will marry people younger than you. Don't be angry. I'm sorry I'm saying this, but I'm challenging you. And brothers, don't think what I've said now is a license for you to be foolish. Because some of you deserve no almost forever until you do something with your life. Please, don't, don't ever use what I'm saying now as an endorsement to come and harass any lady. If you don't merit saying any no, um, they will bring you to me. You are going to meet me somewhere in the equation. Uh, we will meet and I will tell you, no, no, you are not, you are not responsible enough. It's as simple as that. She may not have the courage to tell you, but I guarantee you I will tell you. You know why I'm doing this to you tonight? I came with this spirit of fatherhood tonight because I, I want to challenge you. You're on your way to better days. You're on your way to better days. Every marriage you see here, by God's grace, some of our people here who are gloriously married, there were steps they took. Some of the things you are seeing here, the lives that are successful in ministry by God's grace you belong to a ministry that God has helped these are the things that we do they are not what we are saying they are things that we do he said that which you have seen me do among many witnesses do also do also be serious with your life I can count the number of times you will come to my place and find me sleeping sleeping snoring any time of the day I'm awake doing something. There are sermons to prepare. There are videos to watch. I am, I am so passionate about eradicating my ignorance. So passionate. Please rise up on your feet. You're on your way to paradise. Three prayer points. Please, no moving around. We're going to pray. This is part of the meeting. I want you to pair yourselves into two and let's just take five minutes to really pray if you are married please you can hold your wife or husband or whatever and pray because this is serious prayer we are going to pray now lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit in one minute In the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will lo I come in the volume of the book pray in the spirit hallelujah hallelujah prayer point number one Lord, I vow, I make a covenant with my destiny. A covenant of seriousness and purposelessness. From today, I make up my mind to be serious and to be purposeful. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Young and old, male and female, those following online, I enter a covenant with my destiny. I must fulfill destiny from tonight. I decree and declare in the name of the Lord Jesus. No more joking. No more playing games with my life.
make sure you pray those outside make sure you pray something is happening prayer point number two you are going to pray and say lord every knowledge i need every light i need to prepare me for an extraordinary life please reveal it to me lift your voice and pray the information i need access to light are you praying take away ignorance financial ignorance ministerial ignorance leadership ignorance take it away from my life spiritual ignorance I bring it to the cross and I decree and declare that there is supernatural grace to work it out to work it out to work it out prayer point number three prayer point number three oh God the spirit of laziness and inertia that spirit that refuses me from being diligent I curse it right now with Jesus name open your mouth and pray I challenge laziness spiritual laziness mental laziness physical laziness wanting something for nothing I curse that spirit grace to be diligent grace to be valuable grace to invest in myself hallelujah hallelujah two more prayer points father destroy premature the appetite for premature manifestation manifestation when i'm not ready destroy that appetite from my life lift your voice and pray pray premature manifestation in business premature manifestation in ministry premature manifestation in family life premature manifestation in leadership i receive grace i receive grace i receive grace to prepare like Jotham. i prepare my ways before the lord and so i work strong and mighty for preparation hallelujah hallelujah the last prayer point before I pray for you the courage the discipline and the diligence to take necessary action because some of you the season you are in now is the season of action you can't prepare forever you've got to step that spirit of fear that lack of courage what will people say I'd like you to lift your voice and destroy it right now lift your voice and pray Lord it's time to take action over my finances it's time to take action over family life it's time to take action in ministry the action that will move me over my career over my job it's time to take action please lift your hands let me pray for you I want to pray for you sincerely from my heart I want you to believe it God sees my heart whom I serve and God knows that my greatest desire listen my greatest desire I have always frowned at the leadership paradigm that makes one person a superstar shining while the rest are helplessly everybody can shine it will not kill the honor of the leader if you are a true leader even in the greatness of the people you have raised they will honor you and give you your place 
there are many leaders who are not passionate i made a vow with god when i started ministry when koinonia started i've shared it with you i will never pastor people who are not influential i believe you can be anointed you can be spirit filled you can be responsible you can be financially free you can be influential and useful in the kingdom you do not have to choose one area you can choose everything you don't have to choose prayer and the word and neglect responsibility you don't have to choose excellence and responsibility and neglect the ministry of the spirit all of them are supposed to be complementary so all these teachings that you see i bring them some of the teachings are hard but they are designed to file our lives into action the bible says iron sharpeneth iron are we together now so as you receive this word don't sit down arguing it don't be offended by it if it strikes you the idea is to receive it into your spirit as the word from god and know that this is coming from a leader that is passionate about your success if i see you today excelling and doing great things for the kingdom is my fulfillment you give me money today i'm blessed but i mean what do i do with that one but if i see your life transformed you are a great man of God doing mighty things for the kingdom. That's my source of joy. My paradigm is not outshining people and having people struggling around. And then one superstar called Joshua Selman. My desire is to be the least even among everybody rising. It still will not destroy my worth. Lift your hands. In the name that is above all names, I pray for you. The grace that God supplied in my life that granted me the discipline to prepare. I am still preparing. But the discipline to have started that journey regardless of the challenges. I pray for you. May that grace come upon your life. The spirit of indiscipline and carelessness I declare that it lives your life this night and forever some of you the spirit of slumber and gluttony food and sleep that is robbing your destiny be free from it this night some of you inferiority complex the, the pressure to look successful the pressure to belong is making you to do a lot of things you've done too many foolish things the change comes for you now some of us the pressure of association i want to become like my friends my contemporaries that that pressure to to fit in a group that is destroying you i command that pressure to leave you right now For some of you the embarrassment to start again the embarrassment to start again after life has whipped you your business may have failed your ministry may have failed your career may have failed you are um, you apply for a job you try to ask a lady out the, the the courage in the name of jesus i declare that grace for you again in the name of jesus christ i pray for you may you begin to access deeper levels of revelation may god lead you to the books may god lead you to the messages may god lead you to the conferences where your anointing and your wisdom is waiting for you in the name of jesus christ whatever you do not know now that is responsible for your fears responsible for your concerns i pray that the light of god's word will swallow it right now the grace to go back to your drawing board the unashamedness to carry those books you used to write in that you have thrown away those dreams you used to write in some of you had books god used to speak to you every night but just because of little results you threw them may you go back and get those books again the culture listen the healthy spiritual culture you observe that brought you this far i release grace for you to continue it 
some of you the prayer life that brought you this far you have left it now the word study life the humility that brought you this far you have left it the sense of honor for authority that brought you this far you have left it please whatever you have left that you should not leave i command get back to it in the name of jesus i speak over your life what has not been done in your family the limitations that they have put and say this family cannot cross this I prophesy to you you are the one who will cross that barrier in the name of Jesus second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 thank you Lord Jesus Christ second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 let's trust the Lord to open our eyes tonight please read with me it's projected one to read for God hath not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind one more time for God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind help us Holy Spirit there are certain things that I want us to learn number one is that when God wants to bless a man he gives him the spirit of the blessing the Bible is talking about the giving of spirits here that fear has a spirit that love has a spirit dimension that power has a spirit dimension that a sound mind has a spirit in any case there is a distribution of spirits but he's only saying among the spirits given god does not give fear listen carefully before we get into the subject of fear so when god wants to cause your mind to be sound the first thing he does is not to give you an information there is a spirit dimension there is a transaction that must happen in the realm of the spirit and then it will manifest as a sound mind listen very carefully if fear comes to you it does not come as a psychological reality the spirit is sent listen carefully when that spirit gets a hold of you it will now take advantage of your faculties of expression and you begin to react to what you may think is psychological called fear hallelujah very powerful so the bible here is saying god had not given the spirit of fear all spirits are given and all spirits are received that god can give something so if fear is at work in a man it means that somehow you received it are we together now whether you are aware or not the bible anything given has to be received to find expression as many as received him you shall receive power so the bible is saying god had not given us the spirit of fear this is a very powerful revelation whatever you have not gotten the spirit of you have not gotten that reality so if the spirit of revelation is not upon you you cannot have revelation no matter how you read the spirit is what empowers you if the spirit of the blessings the wealth of the kingdom does not come upon you no matter what you do physically it will not give it expression that means god starts to lift people by introducing them to the spirit component of everything that he wants to bring them into that every physical dimension here has a matching spiritual dimension and that god will grant you access listen carefully to the spirit dimension of that reality and then sooner or later you will begin to walk in that reality so death is a spirit and before a physical death happens there is a proposition in the realm of the spirit and somehow if for any reason you receive that spirit 
then what you have received will begin to manifest life is also a spirit that it is possible that you can receive it and no matter what the barrier is the reality of it will come upon you favor is a spirit it's not just a good will that means the spirit can come upon you and that spirit itself will alter your behavior and alter those around you to begin to reflect it listen the characteristics of spirits is that they use bodies and they use minds for expression when a spirit is around you upon you or within you it will begin to alter you to reflect it are you getting what i'm saying now yes that means if a gentleman has a spirit that makes him steal for instance now he may not even know he has received that spirit everything around him is reflecting that there is an influence higher and greater than him compelling him to steal if you hide money under this pulpit he should not know but the spirit like word of knowledge will cause him to bend and take that money out he doesn't have to know he's being led because he has received the spirit are we together now so the first information is that a man only begins to rejoice when the spirit of your result has been received that every result and every dimension has a spirit component and that when you have it then it is a reality listen very carefully elijah knew this and when he began to pray there was something he was looking for that rain in itself has a spirit component are we together now and the moment he started seeing that manifestation he knew that something had already been crystallized in the realm of the spirit and he began to run and within a short time there was a, a thick cloud god has not given us the spirit of fear the second thing i want you to learn is how god deals with fear look how dangerous fear is that it takes three dimensions of god's spirit to totally conquer fear look at how god addresses fear that because of how dangerous and serious this operation is it is not enough to give you power it won't conquer fear that there is a tripartite combination of power of love and of a sound mind this is what will totally conquer fear in a man's life so god has not given you the spirit of fear but to shield you from the effect of fear he gives you the spirit of power he gives you the spirit of love he gives you the spirit of sound mind listen that means there is a relationship between weakness and fear if he gives you power is because weakness is associated with fear are you getting what i'm saying now there is a relationship between weakness and fear that every time you are not aware of strength the reaction is that you can allow fear to find expression number two that there is a revelation of the love of god and love towards men that if you do not sustain fear will be inevitable number three there is a relationship between a depraved understanding and fear look at how god solves the issue of fear love power sound mind do you know listen let me tell you this <clears throat> fear looks like a very simple issue but did you know that every other spirit waits for fear to walk if you reject fear you can reject every other spirit the bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage meaning that every spirit is at the mercy of fear it is fear that has the courage to open the door that every oppression of darkness that comes to you stands waiting for fear to give them access and that fear begins to manipulate your understanding and that if you lack power you lack love you lack a sound or an enlightened mind you will give fear access and with fear every other manifestation 
many people fail in life not necessarily because of ignorance because of fear fear the fear to take steps the fear to arise the fear to minister the fear to do so many things that's why when angels appear the first thing they tell people is fear not because they know that the weakness of men wires them to be afraid yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear not that means that is what is supposed to happen that every time you are surrounded by uncertainty the valley of the shadow not the spirit the shadow the similitude of death meaning that whatever looks like death can cause fear no matter how real or aberrated it is the valley of the shadow of death it causes fear but it says i will fear no evil there is a reason for thou art with me i have an understanding of what your presence and your love can do listen very carefully courage is not the issue of masculinity it is a product of understanding certain things about god that the spirit of power is given to men so that they can conquer fear if you are suddenly told right now <clears throat> that you have the power to cure cancer even at stage four maybe a drug do you know you will no longer be afraid is that true mm. the information that you hear does something to you and if you do not have the power to resist it it will cause fear and when fear enters you it will destroy everything about your life so the spirit of fear manipulates your understanding manipulates your faculty of expression how many of you have seen children because of their understanding they do not easily have the fortitude for fear you, you get the point now they are not aware that this can hurt them and so they will come with confidence that means that the moment you are aware of the potential of a thing to destroy you and you are aware that you do not have power over it it will create an unnecessary sense of caution why do we fear poverty because we think we do not have power over it why do we fear death have you seen traditionally that cut themselves and nothing happens a system try to aberrate power and immune them so they can dare the undareable because they are aware that there is some form of power that has given them immunity are we together now when armed robbers go to rob and they rob all kinds of things around them they believe the awareness that there is some power that they have will make them look at you and even stand in front of a gun and then you shoot and nothing happens and they laugh why because something has immune them that means the awareness of lack of power will keep you in fear forever please listen to what i'm teaching you the fear of failure causes failure the fear of limitation causes limitation the fear of weakness causes weakness the fear of death causes death the fear of poverty causes poverty wasteful spending is bad but fearful spending is evil are you seeing that now yes notice the degree to which fear controls our life the moment you are driving suddenly fear comes you can die and all of a sudden you are confused a voice speaks to you and say you can die you have a dream and in that dream you see yourself in a coffin you stand up and all of a sudden in your own room you are no longer comfortable you need somebody else's presence to console you no voice was heard something was done to your mind 
but the awareness of power he says but the people that do know their god they shall be strong strong power the awareness that the believer can sustain power over and against the works of darkness can annihilate and destroy fear listen listen to me fear has destroyed more people than you can imagine there are many people who may never rise there are many families who may never rise there are many ministers who may never rise because of fear the fear of death being the greatest of them i will die i may die job said the thing that i feared most has come upon me because fear works like faith so the bible says god has not given us the spirit of fear but of power number two of love there is something about the understanding of the love of god you see the bible says i have loved you with an everlasting love and i have drawn you with my loving kindness let me talk to you why do people not give what is the reason talk to me if i tell you empty your account now what do you think is going to happen to you you say well it's not what's the issue why why should i empty it i've planned it for something it's called fear fear are we together now oh travel from here to lagos you say ah night boss this abuja kaduna express where i've i've had stories around it fear listen very very carefully fear has destroyed a lot of people you cannot rise because you are afraid and the bible says there is something about the knowledge of the love of god you see sometimes we need to really know who god is there are many believers who cannot even rise spiritually because of an aberrated understanding of who god is so there is something about the love of god he says the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the love of god for god so loved the world behold what manner of love the father had bestowed upon us if god who did not spare his son but offered him freely how much more listen it says if ye being evil know how to give good gifts so a revelation of the love of god can settle your confidence that i know that i know that i know that god will back me that i know that i know that i know that god loves me and his interest has been invested upon my life and then the spirit of a sound mind when the lord opened my eyes to this i said wow a sound mind is not just psychological a sound mind is a spirit no wonder the madman in gadara he was not just mad because he was confused his talking anyhow was a reflection of his spirit that was at work and the bible says when jesus casted that spirit they came later and found him sitting with jesus in his right mind in his right mind a sound mind the word sound here means balanced it means enlightened an enlightened mind is a spiritual mind that you have too much information to just shift you left and right you are an adult if i tell you this chair will break you will not be afraid because there is a sound mind you have an understanding enough to know it was built to take your weight a sound mind that means when we do not have an enlightened perception and an understanding it can create fear all kinds of fear think how many things fear has done in your life it is a dangerous spirit it causes bondage all kinds and all sorts of bondage there are people today who will never buy a car because of fear there are people today who will never travel because of fear there are some of you who will never go to the village because you had a report somewhere and you say me and village god forbid fear
God has not given us the spirit of fear but he has given us the spirit of power do you know what the spirit of power is the spirit of power is not just the anointing no no there are two different things the spirit of power is not the anointing when moses was telling joshua <laughs> he said joshua be strong and of good courage that is the spirit of power is the daring the spirit of power is not just an anointing to heal the sick no 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 is a grace is a spirit that plants faith that grants you access to confront things confront challenges be strong he said and of good courage did the bible not say be strong in the lord and in the power of his might every time the bible is talking about the arsenals of darkness it says be strong you need the power the strength the capacity to dare the unbearable if you will ever rise to be great the spirit of power mm. that grace was upon esther and she says i'm going to go and see the king if i perish i perish that's the spirit of power let me tell you this there are times in your life when you will not see any boat you are going to have to trust god and jump on that water and begin to walk by the spirit the revelation that the power of the holy spirit is able not only to keep but to protect to lift his divine power the spirit of power lord you have spoken i believe you i don't know how it will happen but in the name of jesus what do you want me to do lord if you say i should empty my account i'm going i if i perish let me perish be strong and of good courage because life will intimidate you and it will cause fear fear in ministry fear in life fear of anything but you need the spirit of power life does not give you guarantee for any result when you see people who have results let me tell you especially in the kingdom much more than just their belief and their conviction about god this was the grace that was at work in them the spirit of power the spirit of power not just the anointing to heal the sick the courage the fortitude the capacity to stand and say bring any weight this is what was upon david when he stood before goliath it was not just the anointing to heal the sick no he stood before goliath and said who is this uncircumcised philistine because notice how goliath oppressed them he used fear he came and continued to use his size to oppress them and then a young boy comes with the spirit of power and looks at him and says who is this uncircumcised philistine then he now says am i a dog look at goliath talking now am i a dog that you come to me with sling and spheres and then he says well you may come to me with your bow and all of this but i come to you in the name of the lord god of israel the one you have defied then david now says mr man let me even tell you how i'm going to kill you not only that you are going to die this is what will happen i will first throw you on the ground then i will use your own sword and remove your head and give it to the birds the spirit of power there are many of you who have experienced this in the place of prayer and you did not know it was it that you begin to pray over something you are confused you don't know where the rent is going to come from the fear is eating you up suddenly while you are praying this grace begins to come on you and you stand up and begin to speak and act boldly the lord is my light and my salvation hmm. and you begin to make bold proclamations and stand at the gate of the enemy and decree and declare that regardless of what it is the word of god will come to pass let me tell you this since fear is a spirit that means fear can know people and it can know those who it should not try again any spirit can talk can know look at the bible the spirits in the madman in gadara spoke to jesus have you come to destroy us 
before our time they are knowledgeable they are not ignorant they are not robots that means when fear comes to you it observes your response when it sees the deficiency of power of a revelation of the love of god and of an enlightened mind it is permitted to come in and destroy you are we together i've shared with you how that many times i can be at the airport or i'm on my way taking a trip and some person sometimes i don't know them sometimes i know them they can send me text and say apostle please i just saw an accident a ghastly motor accident and i saw you dying please don't think i'm speaking bad against you i just saw you dying please cancel that journey now the person may be sincere but the spirit of fear takes that opportunity and wants to manipulate you are we together now when you hear that a loved one dies it does something to you fear will capitalize on it who is next because that loved one who died was a christian that loved one who died was this and that and that fear is a dangerous spirit the day you go to the hospital and they tell you sorry you you thought you were aa we just discovered that you are sso from that day fear comes to the hospital too as they're announcing the result it takes the result and works on your mind while you are sleeping it says begin to count let's assume you have 40 more days to live and then it begins to help you count down you will think nothing will happen until you see what begins to happen to you all your goals and dreams will just pack up fear has taken advantage of a an incorrect communication of rapture to destroy believers and make them irresponsible it looks like it's a spiritual statement but that awareness every time you want to take a giant step it comes and says what is there jesus is on his way coming and it's supposed to look like a good thing but because you have been threatened about the coming of jesus that it represents judgment and what even you, you what will happen to you and you are not productive until you find out you are 70 years old and nothing happened the spirit of fear has destroyed a lot of people the spirit of fear has stopped people from receiving the spirit of fear has stopped people from rising the spirit of fear has stopped people from daring a lot of things but tonight that in the name of jesus we will conquer fear let me tell you something one of the effects of fear is that it makes you to forget the goodness and the benefits of god when fear comes upon you it can erode the awareness of everything god has done in your life he said bless the lord oh my soul listen very carefully bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name then he begins to list i hope you know that all the things he's listing are the things that cause fear who forgiveth your sins who healed your diseases who delivers you from this and that he said bless the lord that means that even gratitude you will not be able to say lord thank you because you are aware fear you know you've heard my story i used to be oppressed by demon spirits real demon spirits and now the dangerous thing about the ability to see is that demons can also take advantage of it it's not everything you need to see are we together now and i will lie down on the bed and with my own eyes here these spirits just enter my room they don't open the door they don't do anything i shout jesus i shout everything i know to shout just like you have been shouting and i tell you it doesn't do anything to them you see you are laughing because that's what you are secretly afraid of because jesus is supposed to be like the highest factor that drives spirits when you shout jesus and they don't at least react i shouted jesus 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 and these spirits they would come press my neck and i'm just watching i can struggle for hours 
do you know it got so bad that every time it was evening it would affect me i used to sleep at the edge of the bed if you like put the bed from this wall to that wall i will sleep at the edge do you know why so that when they begin to oppress me i would do my best and fight my way at least when i'm falling down what whatever happens i can fall down and wake up yes it's true wicked spirits i remember the day the revelation of the power and the grace of god came upon me i ran home i didn't pray i ran home and i stood outside and i begged them to come i officially invited them fear fear when you lose the ability to be afraid of evil that statement i will fear no evil there is no limit to what your life can be when god grants you the grace to reject fear the reason why many do not give is because of fear fear that there is insufficiency and they may never rise the reason why many people keep running abroad and can smuggle their way through chad through libya move through the forest and the desert and almost die because they are getting to europe is because they believe that one day nigeria will pack up and everybody will kill everybody and the oil will finish or we are going to drink it or something will happen fear the moment they announced recession in nigeria people who were not working started suffering people who didn't have jobs who were not supposed to be afraid they were already like that since but they received something fear just sat upon nigeria recession and people started going down and started giving reasons to say look you two you know how times are recession when men say that there is a casting down you that means you are not a man you are a man who, but something has lifted you beyond the realm of men when men shall say there is a casting down that you will say there is a lifting up is it not in your bible that a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side listen to me very carefully it says but none shall hurt you only with your eyes shall you behold the reward of the wicked if you allow fear to get to you it will destroy you ladies listen to me they have told you the moment you get to 28 29 30 certain things start happening to your system you can believe it or they can tell you when you are 50 years old or 50 something you cannot be able to give birth again and your life will be destroyed the moment people celebrate 50 years they start deteriorating because they call it midlife crisis they expect something to go wrong when they are 60 years and nothing has happened in their life it sounds strange fear fear the spirit of fear there are many of you today who cannot rise to do certain things because fear has told you we are ordinary people we are weak people let me not embarrass myself let me not disgrace myself but god has not given us the spirit of fear but the spirit of power the spirit of love listen let me tell you this i pray for you that the love of god will truly be a revelation in your heart he said i have loved you with an everlasting love and i have drawn you with my loving kindness i have loved you unashamedly with an everlasting love and i have drawn you with my loving kindness what shall separate us from the love of god you, you have to know why paul is teaching these things what shall separate us then he begins to list all the things that you think can separate you from the love of god famine wars etc i say nay in all these things we are more than conquerors by the revelation of the love of god 
so when the devil tries to project fear the revelation of who god is listen and the fact that he loves me that the jealousy of god is an investment upon my life when you know this like you want to hurt a little child and he will run to his father you see some of these are little ones they run all around and with confidence they jump on you and they expect you to hold the bible said trust in the lord trust in the lord listen with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding the word trust is the word bata is the word that gives an expression of someone jumping hoping that the father will hold you to take away all the limitations and just throw yourself at god and say lord i know that you are able to hold me and while people are saying oh dear a hand that comes to protect you and that hand is called the love of god the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the love of god the love of god will not allow darkness eat you up the love of god will not allow you to be a shame and reproach to you and your family be aware of this you are god's investment his love is upon you it will give you an understanding you are not alone please listen to what i'm telling you because you will stand and you will confront battles where there is no human assistance but the awareness of the love of god i know that god loves me it's a revelation that i have i have gotten in a way that i'm grateful for the love of god the love of god the love of god the love of god furnish within you if there is one person god will favor on this earth is me i know it's because of his love i don't know how far between you and him but i know he has drawn me into the inner chamber of his love like the king tells esther come what do you want even up to half of my kingdom this is my mentality when i pray this is my mentality when i talk there is no fear that's why sometimes i can tell you ah there's someone outside there do you think it's just because i'm seeing a vision this is a risk you don't stand before the whole world and speak stupidly like that what if nothing happens and nothing happens again and nothing happens again and nothing happens again the love of god the love of god for we know that all things work together not for everybody not for every christian to them that love the lord and to those who are the called the called the called according to his purpose the revelation of the love of god is something that has consumed me do you know sometimes when i sit down i say what's 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 that lady's song take it down for me let's let's shout that song jesus you love me too much oh too much oh too much oh listen to you is a song but god wants it to be a revelation what will you do if you suddenly knew that the jealousy of jesus is standing by you to protect you you think the love of god is a little issue until you see what has happened in your life as a result of lack of knowing it when Mukhtar came here with his wife when he held that lady he was happy standing protecting her and speaking and you could see the confidence in his love and does by a ring now whether you like her or not is no longer an issue the ring has demonstrated that this love is a lifetime commitment was it not the awareness of the love of the father of the prodigal son that gave him the courage to get up and return back home he was with pigs and for a while every time he thought of going back fear would keep him you see what fear does and then one time he said mm -mm, how many hired servants has my father and i'm here feeding with swine he said i know something about my father 
there is something i know about him no matter what we know how to settle ourselves i will arise and i will go to my father do you know while he was talking the father was already on his way coming the bible didn't say he went and met the father at home ah the father was saying no he's my son no matter what love love no matter i will still meet him and come and carry him and while he was coming afar off immediately he saw the father he gave him a hug and put a signet ring the love of god the love of god so when you see things in your life listen to me and you know that ah, the way things are now kai oh god this nigeria god you have already said this is a year of extraordinary what is happening then you rest in the fact that god what is mine that you are mindful of for you to know this you have to see a gentleman in love what is that girl that you are mindful of that they are talking to you you are not even hearing again how are you and you're, ah, sorry ah, that's exactly what happens to god listen you are laughing but i need you to understand that means i am in his mind he's thinking right now what do i do for joshua selman how do i lift him oh i see all the attacks around his life but my love my love my love my love for him my love for him is the confidence i use when i minister to people i know his jealousy is an investment upon my life that he will protect with his blood do you know this about god so when somebody looks at you and says i will kill you the person doesn't know what he's saying you need to know who you will kill first nobody comes with any nonsense prophecy and scares me no no the love of god has created a vaccination against that rubbish oh apostle i just saw you dying oh apostle no 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 because many of us are we are victims of all kinds of speakings from people and they may not listen they may not necessarily be lying do you know your family has witchcraft do you know your family has this god can deliver you but the fact that you cannot even think that god can lift you every time i see people who can bless me i start rejoicing i know what god is going to do god i know what god will do i live a very happy life knowing that i can rest in his love the spirit of love the spirit of love the spirit of love hmm. elijah knew this when there was famine he didn't say god what about me how am i going to eat no god if you kill me who now prophesies over israel and god says for you i exempt you go to brook cherith i don't know whether you understand sowing or reaping but i'm going to make a bed because men will not agree to come and meet you so i will use an animal this is the revelation over my life i believe in the love of god over this ministry you see when you know god it doesn't look fair when god's love zooms towards you is a fearful thing it takes away fear from your life the fear of the future what will the future be like what will the future be like will i have children will they be well behaved your brain cannot carry that kind of load he says my yoke is easy fear can make you a laborer it can give you assignments that didn't come from god a lady of 18 years is already touching her womb all around hoping she'll be pregnant you can imagine that kind of thing by yourself you are sitting in front of the internet many things to browse the presence of god you just start browsing signs of cancer enter what do you think made you do that now please listen to what i'm telling you and if you will find something there that you may have once your leg starts paining you ha, it's a sign that this and that you say ah 
that pain Jesus you love me too much too much too much it's a revelation my father loves me too much oh look at jesus he says this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased listen listen you see the way we live our lives many times is a mockery on the love of god it shows that there is something about the love of god we do not know your atm gets missing and for that whole day you are moody it's not the atm is that your trust was in it and now that your atm has disappeared fear now comes what if somebody gets it and withdraws money how much is even there are you seeing now fear fear you wake up in the night and for you forgot to close your door now it's good to close your door but it's fear that the speed you have, who has entered listen it's a terrible way to live and to deliver those who through fear have all their lifetime subject to bondage the moment people are about to retire they start you see people who were once confident they will now tell you ah how do i this life you know how this thing is now and what you fear comes upon you eventually in my life i don't think failure i truly am a winner you can wear life till you win it comes by a revelation of who god is you can you can wear situations and circumstances please listen to me i can never fail truly speaking truly speaking it's his love that keeps me conscious i know what he has put upon me and i know what it can do so when i tell you that if i pray for you you will be blessed it's not arrogance it is an awareness You're amazing. Listen. When you have this knowledge, please just walk with me. We are going to pray. Don't trivialize what you hear me share tonight. Please. Don't trivialize it. You will be surprised at the level of failure that comes to your life if you don't listen to what i'm telling you the awareness god's interest is in my life god's interest is in my life his reputation upon me is at stake and he will move all and sundry to see his purpose is birthed that way you enter your rest it's a sabbath that comes knowing you see it says my father walk hitherto i walk that means that there it is when it is when the father is walking and you are walking something is wrong as he's walking i am resting in the fact that my interest is protected the love of god the love of god when i think about the love of god fear there is no fear not fear of the future where this is a this is this is a powerful word there is nothing that god has told me that i don't believe him because i know his love i know what god can do i have seen in earthly terms what a guy can do when he loves a lady pastor alpha i've seen what you can do because you love your wife pastor femi i've seen what you can do to mercy because you love her this these are human beings Have you ever seen someone flog your child in school? He was wrong, go. Yet, you dragged that child and went to school and said, where is the teacher? Must you flog? You have to look for a way of defending your child. It's called love. You conquer fear when you are aware of the love of God. If I hear that favor is coming this way, 
I don't say, Lord, I hope it will reach me. Yeah, yeah. My prayer is for you. That Lord, when you finish with me, let it at least touch them. Because if that favor comes, I know. I know. This no, it's, it's a revelation, my brothers and my sisters. The love of God. God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. Joshua Selman. The little children used to sing, Yes, Jesus loves me. We became adults and forgot the song. And fear took over our lives. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves my future. Jesus loves my destiny. Jesus loves my results. Jesus loves my longevity. It is in his interest that I do well. He said, I will give you a new heart, a new spirit. All of those things, he said, for my name's sake. My name's sake. There is a word for it, it's called reputation. I heard today that one of our ladies who is or was in the school of ministry, that the lady, I think she just collapsed or something and like a mental problem, maybe like a bipolar problem and all of that. The moment they spoke to me, I don't know her. But the fact, the, the fact that she's part of a family that I lead, my love and my jealousy kicked in immediately. When I got home, I sent a text to one of our ladies. I said, so how much are the bills and who is there? It's called love. When some are trusting in horses and chariots, you just stand there stranded. And here comes that bridegroom, the faithful bridegroom. Who is keeping my bride waiting? Have you not read that jealousy is the rage of a man? You want to see an angry man touch his wife? He may respect you and be nice, but you just touch his wife. When you are aware that you are the bride of Christ and fear comes, was it not what Haman was trying to do to Esther? He was trying to put fear, I'm going to annihilate the Jews. He was even digging the gallows already. But Esther knew something about the king. And when she provoked his love, even apology brought him to trouble. You still want to rape my wife upon the fact that you have annoyed her. Have you not been told that you are the apple of his eyes? You come and try to touch my eyes. Listen to what I'm telling you. I want you to end this fear thing once and for all in your life. Fear of failure. Where will help come from? Who will arise for me? It's an insult. Listen, in this ministry right now, if you get up by God's grace, you get up and say, you come and meet me and say, Apostle, I hope you have generator for the end of the service. I, I hope that uh, by tomorrow, I, I hope this meeting, there's miracle service on Friday. I, just, I hope you will not be embarrassed. You see, I will look at you and I will feel very sad because it's an insult. So when you turn to God and say, God, so now who will help me? And God says, don't worry. I said, mm, tell me who, because I, I don't trust you. There's something about you. And God says, you trusted your landlord. You trusted your lecturer with five years of your life. A guy came to you from somewhere like the bush and just two weeks of knowing him, you trusted him with your heart. And God says, trust me with your destiny. And fear says, mm -mm. God has a track record of failing men. Be careful. Tread with God with caution. You see that? So you say, God, I'm, I'm going to be with you, but let me hold on first. In case you fail, let my uncle be a backup plan. And God says, me, search my credibility. Search my credibility. It's why people don't get delivered. It's why people don't prosper. Many bad things happen to people because they do not understand the love of God. Today is Kenny's birthday. And yesterday when he told me about the birthday i was tired after the session in the morning stroke afternoon immediately i saw him i said ah get into the car let's go home at least let me go and pray for you and all of that love love what is the revelation of the blood of jesus to you you see come pastor alpha look up we're going to pray hold this phone if i give you 10 naira to get this phone it means i love the phone more than the money is that true 
the respect is not for the money the respect is what i bought in exchange for the money so when you look at what the father bought with jesus that he used jesus as an atm card to pay for something so what is the name of that something he paid for that jesus was crying and saying father i said jesus just finish this thing i i know we will, we will even if you are angry with me i will sort you out later but because of this man that i love and then some person will come with one prophecy and tell you a lot of nonsense and in five minutes you look at the love of god and say ah lord i always knew now every good and perfect gift comes from above from above from the father of lights in whom there is no variableness do you know what is variableness that means there is predictability to his integrity it is on this that we rest that God in heaven can look at me and I know that he loves me apostle where will the partners of this ministry come from i am only a bride watch the responsibility of my faithful husband he said husbands love your wives if a husband does not love his wife he's a sinner he's not just a bad person he's a sinner if you have been evil know how to give good gifts i'm showing you how 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 we conquer fear know how to give good gifts how much more your heavenly father so when i go to god to pray i pray with confidence this is the confidence we have that whatever we ask in his name he heareth us why because he loves us the love of god is a powerful revelation and then lastly, I will pray a sound mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Jesus Christ. That means there is a thinking, there is a belief system that needs to be altered and adjusted. If you do not sustain a superior understanding about God and about life, you will be a failure forever. There is a mentality that empowers fear in our lives many people fail before they start whatever they are trying to do they have failed since they knew it will not work their failure only confirmed what was there hallelujah every time god gives us something to do in this ministry i know we will win i know we will succeed every time god grants me the privilege to travel somewhere to minister i know they will be blessed all this complex that we carry around it may have come from our backgrounds but it was enforced and empowered by the spirit of fear spirit of fear so when god is telling you to rise you say, i cannot do I'm, I'm not i'm not good enough but tonight we have to conquer fear if you don't conquer fear you will never prosper if you don't conquer fear you will not be able to go through the valley of the shadow of death without fearing evil if you do not conquer fear you will never be able to rise to do the things that God wants you to do I believe in Jesus he has given me the grace and the power the power of the Holy Spirit and I am I, the revelation of his love is an indoctrination I've been indoctrinated there is no revelation from the pit of hell that will alter the mindset that God loves me ask him you saw the shirt I wore in the morning when I say I belong to God it doesn't mean I'm born again it means I'm his property his jealousy is upon me it's a beware sign <laughs> To principalities and powers beware this man has an owner you are not a car parked outside beware like you say beware there are dogs in this house 
meaning the owner of this house is responsible enough to protect it hallelujah so if god tells you i will give you a million naira tomorrow you don't just sit and say oh god i i know that you are able to no the love of god the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the koinonia the fellowship of the spirit let this remain with you the lord gave me this word to share as one of the things that must be conquered otherwise let me tell you my brothers and my sisters will keep talking and jumping up and down here and the moment we share the grace i hope you know that when god speaks to you i've taught you he doesn't speak to you like he's speaking to a man he speaks to you like he's speaking to himself so god says femi get ready um to finish the house by october and make sure there is a good car and while he's talking you are just standing there hoping that somebody will bless you with lunch money and god comes to speak to you is it not faith that even works by love do you know what that means most times we think it's just that faith works when you love people no faith works by the revelation of the love of the one who will make things to come to pass faith works by love faith works by love i know that if i open my mouth and i speak and i utter a word the spirit of the lord will honor that word why because of the love of god because of the love of god it's an indoctrination no matter where i go i cannot be ignored you ignore me you will pay for it it's not pride it's true you will pay for it because sooner or later you'll find out that everything you are looking for the one who loves me is the one who gives it he will refer you back to a mindset so that when you hear a testimony like i was just sitting down the lord said i should come and bless you you don't say me oh lord with all gratitude you have done it again oh thank you jesus i received this blessing i received this blessing the nation of israel knew that they were a people loved by god and they were bold when their enemies saw what god did they were afraid if they heard that the israelites were coming they would be afraid they said these people they are god they are god they are god when they started forgetting the love of god and started defying and doing all other things they became the ones afraid the lord is my light and my salvation what can man do to me the lord is my light he's my salvation of whom will i fear i found a cure for fear sincerely believe me when i tell you i don't fear no. i have seen god do things in this ministry do things in my life and do things in the life of people the revelation of his love i like to call it his jealousy when i just call it his love it doesn't carry that weight the word jealousy is very positive when i'm using it to god because it reminds me that i'm his bride it is a fearful thing for you to touch a man that god loves he will act as if he died for only him someone ready to pray tonight I pray that what I've shared tonight will really enter you the cure for fear listen if you think a job can cast out fear you are joking if you think a business can cast out fear you are joking if you think supplements can cast out fear of death you are joking if you think a a nice suv can cast out the fear of death you are joking if you think money in the bank account can cast out fear you are joking we live in a world where fear looms around the horizon everything is programmed to make you afraid but you rest in the fact 
that God has not given me the spirit of fear so if fear tries to come you know that somebody is offering something you need to reject you don't just reject by saying I reject fear you reject it by reminding yourself mm, I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might number two God loves me God loves me Joshua Selman God loves you when that revelation hits you mm, then fear like darkness like smoke before the wind it just moves and it goes away i'd like you to open your mouth and begin to pray lord i'm tired of fear and what fear does lift your voice and pray Halaborande salabrokatishia. the fear of the future the fear of marriage the fear of children the fear of raising children the fear of paying bills the fear of succeeding in ministry are you praying i cause fear i cause fear i cause fear Pray. He baranda salakaruda shede breast. Imbrakato zelekataria natashikatas. Jepros ke barun shalabakariadas. I cause fear. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. Shelamanda rakato sabrede shalabat. Abalanda braga dasete kede balada 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 bo. hallelujah hallelujah job chapter 3 verse 25 and 26 this is job's testimony read with me please one to read for the thing which i greatly feared is come upon me and that which i was afraid of is come to me next verse I was not in safety who told him hold on what was the testimony in job chapter 1 satan testified that have you not built a hedge of protection around him and job said i was not in safety keep the scripture there please neither had i rest neither was i quiet meaning i was not peaceful king james makes it look like yet trouble came it's supposed to be that that's what brought the trouble God has protected you yet you said you are not protected God has preserved you yet you said you are not preserved God has told you I know the thoughts that I think towards you they are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you an unexpected end yet you walk daily in fear God has told you have you not read that you will call and a nation will answer it's not a parable what is a parable in the bible the bible will tell you it's a parable what is the fear for 
the Lord knows how to deliver the righteous from trouble this is this is your Bible when you carry this understanding from tonight my brothers and my sisters you know that you will never fail it's not just a jamboree Pentecostal confession it's a settled reality I know this about God I know this about God what do you know about God that can protect and keep you in the days that come hallelujah your confidence please listen to me your confidence will have a lot to do with your courage your ability to conquer fear many of us here in ministry if you don't conquer fear you will never never be able to rise in ministry many of us here are trusting god for financial liftings if you put your eyes around the economy of nations they looked unto him and their faces were lightened it's in your bible gentiles will come to my light they are kings to the brightness of my rising it says that my gates will be continually open day and night they will not be short that i will receive the forces of the gentiles when he said this i believed him i believed him i believe him I don't know what you don't believe about God but tonight you are going to call fear by its name and curse it by the God of heaven I reject fear lift your voice and pray the fear of death the fear of accident pray ladies will I get a man that will marry me will I get a woman that will marry me I cause fear will I have responsible children will I ever have a house of my own hallelujah hallelujah matthew chapter 6 from verse 24 jesus was dealing with something we continue to ignore next verse therefore i say unto you take no thought the word there is don't fear don't worry it doesn't mean don't be responsible mm -mm. take no thought of your life worry what you shall eat nigerians listen what you shall drink nor yet for your body what you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment next verse the fowls of the air break a fundamental law because if you don't sow you should not reap but because god doesn't only love you he has come down to even love the birds he says they neither sow meaning they should not reap yet your heavenly father not their own your heavenly father extends the benevolence even to them are ye not much better than they next verse which of you by taking thought fear worry can add one cubit to his stature worry and fear does not do anything positive to you does it next verse please and why ye take thought for raiment consider the lilies of the field how they grow they toil not they violate the principle of diligence and productivity neither do they spin next verse and yet i say unto you my goodness that even solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these 30 wherefore if god so clothed the grass of the field 
this is a revelation of his love now which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven shall he not much more clothe you O ye of little faith next verse therefore take no thought and don't go to the extent of verbalizing your fear by saying what shall we eat what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed look at this verse for after these things do the gentiles run after for your heavenly father knows that ye have need of these things your heavenly father knows that if you stay in a rented apartment forever it will affect your christian life your heavenly father knows that if you do not smile and you are not in joy it will affect your christian life he knows he knows he knows he knows that if ministry does not work for you there will not be a platform you will be discouraged he knows there is no temptation the bible says but such as is common to man he says and with every temptation god will make a way of escape you are not the first to be challenged by poverty to be challenged by there will always be the jealousy of god will make him manipulate a way and come through for you are we together i'd like you to lift your voice and begin to speak everything you know god has said must happen to you and say lord i believe you i believe you the sorrow that comes with worry gentlemen pray stress and worry is destroying young people in our generation there are people who have lost sleep because of fear lost sleep because of worry it is the keeper of israel that does not sleep nor slumber so that i can rest Great things have I spoken of you, O Zion. Great things. Great things. He called me the head and not the tail, I believe. He called me above and not beneath, I believe. He called me the delight of nations. Beulah and Hephzibah, I believe. With long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. I believe I refuse to fear I refuse to fear I reject fear I refuse to fear the love of God shields me from fear the power of God shields me from fear the mind of Christ shields me from fear hallelujah hallelujah listen many people you know when you hear me talk like this many people are apostles is because you are not looking for food to eat or this and that let me tell you this the bible says to be carnally minded is death it's not will bring death is already death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace when you allow your mind to become carnal sensual that's the realm of satan how will it come how will i see the rain how will i see the cloud but he said you may not see rain ah you may not see wind yet the valley shall be filled who told you water must come from above doesn't the earth have water too When it was time for Noah's flood, water came from the sky, water came from under. Who told you gold is only found under the earth? When a fish brought gold. That means what is not supposed to make sense can bring you gold and bless you and change your life. This is the God we are talking about. I know him more. I know what he can do. I know what he can do. I know what he can do. You are going to hold someone's hand. We'll sing this song once. 
and then we'll wrap up for tonight Jesus you love me too much Jesus you love me too much too much excess love hallelujah when you look at pastor alpha's wife or a jimmy's wife or any of our gentlemen here if you see the way for instance he decorates his wife and you are offended is she the right person to talk to you go to the husband the wife is just a wife so he says i will walk a walk in your days i want to do something that even if it were told you yourself you will not believe that there are times that a husband can buy a gift for a wife and say ah, is this not too much only where did you get the money say i've been saving this to prove something to you there are certain testimonies let me tell you that some of you are going to enter into that you will even be afraid of sharing because those who hear it will think you are lying it's true this is not motivation please listen to me i'm speaking to you by the spirit ah. when a man's ways pleases the lord that he can make even his enemies look at this abimelech took the wife of abraham abraham lied and he took the wife and wanted to lie with the wife and god said if you do this abraham hold on he's touching me if you touch this man's wife listen there are men who receive answers even before they call the moment god is on a surveillance of their life he's jealous he will be distracted by the worship in heaven and come back again the love will not allow him leave you listen king nebuchadnezzar loved daniel so much that when they now put him in a position where he had to punish daniel he could not sleep in the night by the morning he went himself oh daniel are you still alive has your god been able to deliver you a king cannot sleep because someone is in trouble that means there is someone in this country and somewhere listen was it not because of god's love for esther and mordecai the king sat down and he could not sleep he was rolling from left to right and he got up he said bring me the chronicles out of all the people that did nice things when he came to mordecai he said this man what has been done who is in the chamber Haman came he said what should be done Hi. This God bar my brothers and my sisters when you believe God and get fear out of your life you will stand in shock as you see God give you prepared blessings levels of liftings that God will bring you you will look left and right you will not know what you are doing there and say Lord I shouldn't be here and he says I brought you there I brought you there I brought you there by my spirit i brought you there please i like you to lift your voice even if this is for the last time again destroy the spirit of fear and the bondage that it has put upon your life the bondage it has subjected you to i will prosper even in nigeria i will prosper in the name of jesus christ everything that proceeds from me succeeds everything that proceeds from me succeeds no fear no fear 
I reject the bondage of fear. I reject the bondage of fear. My mind is free from fear. My life is free from fear. Financial fear. Marital fear. Parenting fear. Career fear. Business fear. Ministry fear. Promotion fear. Advancement fear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. The next time fear comes to you, don't just say, I cast you. Suddenly remember you are a woman who is married. Whether you are a male or female, everybody is a bride in the realm of the spirit. Remember who paid your dowry. Remember the price. You talk about expensive dowry, ask Jesus. Ask the father. Your own dowry, you bought cow and yam. You didn't die for your wife. Something else died. Jesus didn't say I would die for you. He died for you. And purchased you. What can separate us? The only thing that can separate you is so anything that can die for you too. Can sickness die for you? Can failure die for you? You will never find me putting my hand on my chin by the window or by the bed breathing life. No. 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 Why should I fear? Why should I fear? Why should I want? Why should I fear? Why should I fear? Why should I fear? One more time. Why should I fear? Why should I fear? Why should I fear? Why should I fear? Listen, I'd like you to square your shoulder and walk boldly through life. Boldly through life. Don't walk around like somebody who is at the mercy of situations and circumstances. If you don't have confidence in yourself, have confidence in your marriage. Hallelujah. It shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither whatsoever he doeth prospers father i declare in the name that is above all names that anyone here suffering under any kind of the manipulation of the spirit of fear be free right now in the name of jesus be free right now in the name of jesus Whether it is fear because of the class of degree you finished with, fear because of your tribe, fear because of your past, fear because of those you don't have that you think are support, I curse that spirit from your life now. I decree and I declare the bondage and the chain that has come upon your mind and your life as a result of fear let it be loose now from your life Adam where are thou 
I heard thy voice but I hid because I was naked fear right in the garden fear I had your voice to bless me but I hid because I thought you will destroy me I decree that the boldness that comes from knowing you are loved by the father may that boldness rest upon you now the revelation of the love of God that that must indoctrinate you into believing you cannot fail may that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ and I declare unto you I don't care how many times you have failed by this revelation I empower you to excel may you become the desire of men may you become the desire of nations that every time men are looking for someone to bless may your face come in the name of Jesus Christ and I decree and declare that whatever the obstacle is that is making you fear is not enough to free you from the spirit of fear we also cause that barrier in the name of Jesus Christ say I refuse to fear say it I refuse to fear this is the message for tonight take it back home pray yes. we are going to round up but carry this mentality I will fear no evil no I will fear no evil reject it dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. the face of development lord grant me the discipline